Jones electrified the crowd with a 70-yard TD run. The longest backfield TD run since O.J. Anderson raced 80 yards against Florida State in 1978. The first unit defense did their share in halting the Mountaineers' offense. Led by defensive end Darren Grine, the top sack man of the Big East Conference. As the cane spell doomsday for West Virginia, 35-23 for their 50th straight home victory. The Temple Owls of Coach Jerry Burnt will be the homecoming opponents at the Orange Bowl. And they hope to score through the air with a combination of Linhart to Lawhorn, the Owls' top offensive weapon. It's the Canes versus Temple next on Sunshine Network. Sunshine Network presents University of Miami Hurricane Football. Brought to you by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant, where all the best of Italy is yours. Welcome to the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, homecoming 1993, and the last home game for 19 Hurricane seniors, as the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes play host to the Temple Owls in a Big East Conference game. Hi everybody, Sam Smith along with former Dolphin great Nat Moore, and I don't need to tell you, it is a breezy, cloudy day here in Miami as we tee it up with the Canes against the Owls, and for the moment anyway, the number one slot on top of both of the college polls belong to the Miami Hurricanes, and that's been quite an argument over the last two years, but now the Canes have the destiny in their own hands, Nat Moore. Well, Sam, that argument has now been settled. Who would have thought back on September 26, when Arizona came in and lost to Miami 8-7, to that they would become the common denominator to settle the dispute by beating Washington 16-3. And this is the difference. Wide right, Steve McLaughlin missing a 51-yard field goal on Miami to remain undefeated. And of course, he went on to kick three field goals and giving Arizona a 16-3 win over Washington, not knocking the Huskies out of the number one spot. Well, you couldn't pick a better time of the year for Gino Toretta to really get his offense going. And Gino, the quarterback for the Canes, back in the Heisman Trophy chase. Right, Jerry. Gino Toretta is coming off three good games. He's uh, completed over 63% of his passes for almost 1,000 yards with nine TDs and only one interception. And he, without a doubt, has got to be the leading candidate for that Heisman Trophy. Well, he's also only five touchdown passes away from surpassing another UM record for most touchdowns thrown of 48 held by Vinny Testaverde and Steve Walsh. And again, he comes in with 44 today. The second team defense has been getting a lot of razzing over the last couple of weeks, mostly from their own teammates. They have not done well to hold up the big honor of the defense at Miami. Well, this week, uh, the defensive uh, football team have been talking to these second teamers because, as you can see, they've given up 40 points in the two fourth quarters of the last two ball games, and that's hurt them tremendously with the ability to repeat as the scoring leaders in the country. Well, today, I think you can tell that the number one defense has talked to number two, and we have a different story. They'll have to play very well against some skilled people for Temple. They come in only one and eight, but Jerry Byrne has some good people to throw and catch the ball. But maybe their best man will be a down lineman, and everybody likes Trey Johnson. Preseason All-American, number 67, Trey Johnson, is one of the best in the country, and without a doubt, the best player on the entire uh, Temple Isles football team. Well, he's got great size, and he'll be a man. As a matter of fact, they run over his side when they're trying to get some short yardage, if indeed they get to that situation today. We've talked about great linebackers. Dennis and Hale, another good inside pair here. Two real good inside linebackers that are both tough at the point of attack, but number 46, Hale, is the spiritual leader. He's the boisterous one, and he's the guy that motivates the team to get up and play, and they must play well if they're to stop that offensive machine of the Miami Hurricanes. This Hale, I guess you would call your free spirit. We've got a free spirit working with us down on the field. Joe Rose, another former Dolphin, is working our ball game down on the field here at the Orange Bowl. And how about the mindset of Dennis Erickson going into this ball game? Does he run up the score? How does he handle it? Let's go to Joe and find out. Joe? Well, Sam, first of all, Coach Erickson all week long has been talking about the importance and the opportunity to have back-to-back -back national championships. Also today, 19 seniors will be playing their last game, and it's been a little bit... Uh, a little teary-eyed down here for a lot of the parents and the seniors. So it's a big day for them as well. 
You brought up a great point, though. The second teamers are going to get a chance to play in this ball game. They're looking for him to do a good job and play well. Dennis Erickson and the Miami Hurricanes preparing for what they hope will be their 51st consecutive home victory at the Orange Bowl as they go against the Temple Owls. We'll have it coming up here on Sunshine Network. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl, everybody, where, again, it is uh, the parents of the 19 seniors that are graduating on this University of Miami club. A proud day, but as Joy pointed out, uh, somewhat of a sad day as well, as 19 seniors will be departing, including 16 starters and the punter. And quite earlier, the Dennis Erickson giving all the hugs and all of the things that go with saying so long to some great, great seniors and, indeed, 16 starters departing for Miami. And there's a good look at Vickers. The weather here at the Orange Bowl will be greeting no sunshine today, it appears, as it has been overcast most of the day. And Dane Pruitt is ready to kick off here for Miami. The deep man, number 80, that is going to be Lawhorn, a very dangerous return man, averaging 33 yards per return, and gets it back to the 20-yard line. There is a flag down on the field after an 18-yard return. Richardson making the stop for Miami. John Smith is our referee today. So as they discuss the penalty here, it'll be a step off. It appears against the Temple Owls, and they will indeed be starting deep in their own territory. So that'll be first down and 10 to go for the Temple Owls. Again, coming in at 1-8 and eight in their quarterback starting this afternoon, a redshirt freshman. Number 14 will be Luke Linhart coming out of Pittsburgh. And you saw the numbers on him as he takes a man in motion. That is Fredericks. Motion to the right side, and he's back to throw to him quickly. And in the open field, he catches it, but once again gets a quick uh, stop on the far side. Coming up is Pearson and Greer to make the stop for Miami. Here are the people running behind it. Washington, a very good deep threat, while the tight end is a good man as well, and that is Peter Cook starting today. Look for him underneath the coverage. Up front again, we mentioned Trey Johnson is a good one. Brian Irwin is the other guy on that strong left side, and if they have to get some short yardage, that is where they'll take the football. It's a second down and 13 yards to go after the game of the pass and run, and this is Linhart back to throw again. He will not get back to the line of scrimmage before Darren Smith comes up to make the stop for Miami. Smith, one of the outstanding linebackers with Barrow and Armstead. And up front, they'll be headed by Krein. Lopez, by the way, starting for Patrick Riley, who separated his shoulder in the West Virginia game, should be ready for Syracuse next week. There is Smith and Barrow, along with Armstead. Smith and Barrow, the candidates for the Dick Buckus Award. And in the secondary, Siegler, Greer, Harris, and McNeil. McNeil, of course, the most experience of the cornerbacks leading the defense number 47 third down 10 yards to go for Temple their first possession of the day on the kickoff Lenhart with a little delay they try to get running room in the middle no place to go as Darren Cry number 91 was the first to smell it out and then Mark Caesar another one of those outstanding seniors the clamp in Cabrera number 44 one of the team captains for Temple will gain no yardage and it's third down and Excuse me, fourth down and kick time now for Temple. So far, Temple has won the only game between these two ball clubs. Interesting enough, it was one of the first indoor games at the convention center in Atlantic City, won by the Owls 34 to nothing. The Notre Dame football team had played in Philadelphia the afternoon before and were in attendance. Again, Temple leading the series 1-0. Going to punting, John Shea. The man back deep for Miami is dangerous Kevin Williams. He sidesteps him in there, and he's off for the sidelines, but will not get far. Good pursuit that time by the Owls. First man to reach him is Bryant Irwin. We mentioned one of the top players, along with Charles Whitfield, and a flag is down on the field. 40-yard, 44-yard punt by Shea. Interesting, uh, Nat, in the fact that Temple came out. They did come out throwing the football, something they have to do against this Miami club. Face mask penalty, and let's see if we can pick it up here. Right there. Didn't take long. Didn't take long. 
One of the things you, you, you have to think that Temple would, would try to do is throw the football because no one has been able to run the ball effectively against that Hurricane defense. Gino Toretta, again, as we pointed out, the last three ball games have just been dynamite with over 63% of his passes and nearly 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns. The senior, one of 19 graduating, will be running with McGuire, Spencer, Thomas, Copeland, and Bell. As the ruthless posse is intact, we'll check the front line after this first down play at midfield. McGuire, the all-time touchdown leader in scoring touchdowns on the ground with 33. Gets the carry out to the 45-yard line and a good gain of nearly six. Jeff Coat, the middle uh, nose guard for Temple, makes the stop. Cristobal, Vickers, Green, London, and Etheridge again the converted tight end up front. We'll do the blocking for Toretta today. You see the down three and Jeff Coat, a good man in the middle. Lekirk and a little injured prone. And there you see the linebackers, including Dennis and Hale. Hale, the free spirit, you'll find him just about anywhere on the field today. This is the Stephen McGuire show as he takes it enough for the first down, gets it down near the 39-yard line before Hale is the first to reach him. Getting a running game started early, very important in a ball game against anybody as we take a look at the defensive people in the secondary for the defensive backs. And Crispina, number two, you'll see him on one of the corners, but he likes to, he likes to blitz from the outside, so we'll see how well he can do that today in blitzing from either left or right against uh, Gino Toretta today. That's a, that's a little different, though, when you think about it, Sam, that uh, here you have your corner that's blitzing all yep. the time where uh, instead of backing coverage, but he's a good hitter, and, you know, he likes to come up and mix it up, and, you know, they're using him effectively. Spencer in motion. Toretta with a dump-off pass. This is Thomas. Lamar Thomas has another first down for Miami, and another flag goes flying into the stack. As the Temple Owls trying to get aggressive here. That is Glasper makes the stop. Kyle out of Houston, Texas, a junior. 40 tackles so far, and the referees will discuss it here again after a catch and run by Lamar Thomas. And he's only a touchdown away from still another record here. And this one will go against Miami. So the Canes are going to be penalized now. As again, we get the rerun coming up as... Lamar Thomas again got it down for about 11 or 12 yard gain. Let's look at it again. Here we see Lamar cutting back against Glassbar here and uh, you know they make the tackle and I think the, the penalty comes in a little late there. Yeah. You see at the top of your screen I think that was Kip Vickers a little anxious uh, after the play trying to you know, throw a block downfield. So the step off will come against the Canes who have had their own way here in their opening series after the Punt returned by Williams that gained nothing after a 44-yard punt. There was a penalty and a personal foul stepped off to midfield. And that's where this drive started. So they'll replay the first down on the dead ball after the play was down. As Nat picked up, so they'll back it up, and it's going to bring up a first down. They've got the down marker back at the 45. Again, Lamar Thomas has caught at least one pass in 31 consecutive games. And, of course, approaching Michael Irwin's record here with the Miami Hurricanes. First down, they'll need 15. Toretta back to throw. He's looking deep. Over the middle. Nice catch. Copeland has it. One of the seniors graduating, trying to get this crowd kind of fired up as he takes it inside the 20. They'll down it at the 17-yard line after a 22-yard gain. As we go back, uh, hopefully we've got a replay here, and you see Horace Copeland do a great job of going down, running about a 20-yard square in, and Toretta puts it in, put it in there, and you see Horace Copeland do a good job of leaving his feet, laying out to catch the football, and you know, that's what helps Toretta become the great quarterback. He's got good, skilled people around him that are willing to lay out and, and uh, put forth a great effort to make the play. McGuire getting the call will take it inside the 15 to the 14 yard line and it is interesting enough as Dennis the inside linebacker makes the stop the running game with McGuire it's been a big luxury for Dennis Erickson all year long with four great running backs to choose from now they've got four great running backs and Stephen McGuire over the years have been the guy but this year be coming off knee injury he was relegated to third team and you know he's now back at the first team but they've got a young kid by the name of Danielle Ferguson that <laughs> is really exciting Jones and Bennett the other two running backs Jones did nothing more than rip off a 70 yard touchdown run against West Virginia 
two weeks ago. The shotgun has been a very good offense for Miami. And McGuire, did he catch and drop it? No, they say it was totally incomplete. He was turning and looking to see where the defense was. Adrian Drones, one of the linebackers, number 43, had dropped with him in the short coverage. And I know you heard a few footsteps. I'm sure you dropped a few turning and looking, didn't you, in that? Well, I, I think any time you, you <laughs> let the ball get into your body where he's trying to catch it here, you yeah. see his head pop up. You know, you, you have a tendency to think you've looked it in, but once it goes down low, you pop up and you look to see where that hit's coming from. This drive starting at the 50-yard line for Miami. They're inside their own 50, the Temple 15, excuse me, at about the 14-yard line. And the shotgun again for Toretta. Trips to the left side. He's looking that way, but here comes the pressure, and he's dropped. So the Temple Owls on a third down play, third and seven, and they get the big rush straight up the middle. Jeff Coat. Jeff Coat, a senior with 54 tackles so far, a 11-yard loss, and it'll bring up a field goal time, and Dane Pruitt will step on. Here we go back, and we look at the play, and this is just a coverage sack. He's got plenty of time, and here you see Jeff Coat coming in, making a, the sack. Uh, he's good. he's a good player, and you know he reminds me a lot of his brother uh, Jim, who plays for the Cowboys. Snyder, the holder, and Pruitt with a field goal try. It is up, and it is good. 42 yards off the toe of Dane Pruitt. His longest so far this year, 44 against Virginia Tech. That just two yards shy, but he gets the Canes on the board early, and a moral victory here early for the Owls. 9:37 left to play here in the first quarter. It is Miami three, and the Temple Owls nothing here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Miami taking a three nothing lead on the strength of the 42 yard field goal by Dane Pruitt, who will be kicking off. And again, some pressure from Temple here early on has uh, paid some dividends for them so far in this ball game. As they get the sack on Toretta, a 11-yard sack that, of course, set up the field goal by Pruitt. He'll be kicking off, and again, Lawhorn, who's already run two kickoffs back this year, one from 89, the other from 94, and averages 33. He will not get this ball. It comes up short to the 20. Temple's going to have some good field position as Fredericks will get the ball there and takes it out to the 31-yard line. So a short kick by Pruitt. Rohan, Rohan Marley makes the stop, number two for Miami. And Frederick, you see, almost came right out of his jersey after the tackle. It'll be Temple's ball at the 31. Leonard, just a freshman. And again, the Canes going 24 yards in eight plays. 308. They need it there with the field goal coming from Pruitt. Hart has already thrown nine interceptions, lines up for the lone running back. And they're using again number 44, Cabrera. Normally Sam Jenkins lines up at that tailback spot, but he is not playing at the moment. Mark Caesar, the big senior down lineman at tackle, already made 35 so far this year, makes a stop for Miami. Yeah, Mark Caesar did a real good job there of just flowing down the line of scrimmage, getting penetration, and coming up with the tackle there. If we go back and take a look here, you'll see him in the middle of your screen as he's just fighting through all of that rubble there and coming up with the tackle. Boy, he dictates a lot of people trying to stop him, too. They had a double team, and he fought through both of that. Gain of only a yard in the play, second down and nine. Here's a handoff again to Cabrera. The senior co-captain takes it out to the 35-yard line. And making the stop again is Kevin Patrick, the top sack man in the Big East Conference. He's got a total of seven, but he's got some company there. As a matter of fact, a freshman by the name of Lance Johnstone, or Temple has seven as well. Here you see Efren coming right through the center. They run a little trap there, bringing number 70 across, trying to run a quick trap there to pick up a few yards there. Third down, six yards for Temple. Down 3-0 to Miami. 827 first quarter. Leonhardt back to throw for the first time in this series. He's going in and out of the hands. That was Armstead trying to make the intercept. He's throwing out here intended for the big weapon for them, number 84, Wilbur Washington, who's their number one receiver. Having caught 21 for 281 already this year. Well, the streak that has included 50 straight games for Miami. And let me give you some mind-boggling numbers here. The streak has lasted for 62,126 hours. How about seconds? Over 22 million seconds <laughs> of a 50-game winning streak for Miami. Fourth and punt time. And again, John Shea came into this ballgame averaging just a shade over 32 yards per punt. Got a 44-yarder off the last time. And booms another one towards Kevin Williams this time. Williams has just not had the luck he had last, last year when he ran three punts back for touchdowns. This one, he gets only a one-yard return after a 36-yard punt. 
But nonetheless, the Canes will have it. They'll take it first down and 10 yards to go on their own 30. They've got a 3 to nothing lead on Temple with 8-10 to go here in the first quarter of the Orange Bowl in Miami on homecoming day 1993. Well, everything is happy going so far in the first period, despite only a 3-0 lead by the Hurricanes, ranked number one in both the Associated Press, the CNN and USA Today poll, knocking Washington out of the number one spot. The Arizona Wildcats, 16-3 last week, and now Gino Toretta, very much back in the Heisman Trophy chase, has a first and 10 at the 30-yard line. The fake to McGuire, plenty of time to throw. Near sideline, this is Spencer. Darrell gave up a little ground and lost a yard after making the reception at the 35. They'll down it at the 34-yard line. Secondary coverage up there, that time by Boyanen. John A. Sr. out of Phoenix, Arizona, and one of the many junior college players that has gone to Temple. Here, John Boyana does a good job of staying there with uh, Daryl Spencer and not taking all the fakes and feints, and he just watches him, watches him, gets his hands on him, and hold on for help. Second down after a gain in the play of right at five yards. It's second and five. The right at this time will give to McGuire. Sealed off blocking to the outside. He'll take it near the 40. That may be enough for the first down. Scott Dennis, one of the middle linebackers, the number one tackler with 84 tackles, number 45. He, along with Hale, really doing a good job in the middle. Good job of that offensive line there. Uh, Carlos Etheridge and uh, Diego London coming off, giving him a little room to get started upfield. And then once McGuire gets started, he's going to gain four or five yards. Two interesting blockers out there as well. Number 35, Spencer, and number five, Kevin Williams, were doing a good job in trying to at least detain their people. The small guys. The small guys. <laughs> Wide receivers come split to the right side. Horace Copeland for one. You know, Toretta, who again has the green light to check off at the line of scrimmage and does on this third down and short yardage. A flag is down, and that may have come just before the play was initiated. I think they were uh, a little late in getting the snap there. Dead ball, delay of game, charge to the offense, replay third down. John Smith, our referee. Dennis Erickson not real happy about that. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. He's been kind of the missing man here early on, Joe. Thank you guys very much. First of all, Jerry Byrne has had a lot of controversy surrounding him the last few days. There's been a lot of articles that he will not be back next year. The team before the game was very upset about it and has dedicated this game to their coaching staff for the Temple Owls. Jerry in his fourth year with the Owls and again has won only 11, lost 31 at the helm of the Owls. Toretta back, a little dumping pass. He's got the speech for Williams. Williams trying to do things and he's got an open. And that is the Kevin Williams that we know with those very quick feet. And has the first down out at midfield after a 15-yard game. Mr. Excitement. <laughs> you, know, you just love to see him get the ball in his hands and run with it. He, he just does a tremendous job of making people miss him. You see him coming on the little screen, the little crossing route. He's going to his right. And he looks up and everything's there. He reverses his field, goes back left. And look how many people have a shot at him and can't come down with him. This guy just has unbelievable running ability. He, by the way, just a junior out of Dallas, Texas, will be one of the starters that will be coming back. When you talk about losing 16 starters, they are indeed going to lean on people by Williams. But I told Nat that before the game, and he said, they'll have people to replace those because that's how deep they are here at Miami. First and 10 midfield for the Canes. Toretta, time to throw. A little slant in. It goes to Spencer. And Daryl Spencer, who started the year coming off a knee injury, is finally brought down by Scott Dennis, but another 19-yard gain for the Canes. Here we see a good we see a good shot of Toretta's gun. He does a good job of fitting this pass in right there between the two linebackers, zipped it in. Daryl Spencer, good concentration and running with the football after the catch. You know, we've talked how well Scott along, uh, excuse me, Dennis along with Hale coverage, but when you get isolation one-on-one -on, -one on those backs, they cannot cover those guys. It's impossible. It's hard for the corners to keep up with them, less more linebackers. Running game just to kind of keep things on us. And this is McGuire fighting for yardage down inside the 20. Another first down for Miami, and their offense is in high gear now. It stalled a moment ago, and they had to settle for only a three-point field goal. Once again, you see Carlos Etheridge and Diego London getting a stalemate there at the line of scrimmage with Stephen McGuire just lowering his shoulder, running over people, picking up the first down. You'll find number 37, that's Daryl Nelson. He is a senior out of Philadelphia as the rover back, so you'll see him up on the line of scrimmage. You'll see him back deep in deep coverage, so number 37 will be doing a lot of roaming today for Temple. 
First and 10, they do spot it at the 20-yard line in Temple territory for the Canes. Holding the linebackers of that fake, and here comes Tourette on the run. Sliding into third base with another first down as he slides at the seven, and Toretta getting up a little bit slowly, but he's all right. But that's another first down, and again, Lance Johnstone makes the stop for Temple. Kind of scary when you see that quarterback in the open field like that. Yeah, but you know, Gino is the type of quarterback that's also like a linebacker. And here you see him make that quick decision. He wanted to go to Coleman Bell there, checking out, and they had it covered. He came out of there in a hurry and got the first down, got the ball down to the six-yard line. John Stone, number 54, is the man I mentioned, is tied with our own Kevin Patrick for the sack lead with seven so far in the Big East Conference. And it's first and goal at the seven-yard line. McGuire will try to do the mop-up to the five, fights to the three, and flags are flying everywhere. Well, Stephen McGuire, again, coming off the knee surgery and was listed as the third or fourth and was not even suited for the Iowa game. Crispina, by the way, along with Angelo, make the stop. But he has slowly but surely worked himself back in in his senior year out of Brooklyn, New York, as the number one man. And he's not going to get any help there as a holding call will be indicated on Miami. Well, he's 100% now. Earlier in the year, he was dragging the leg, and now you can see him running with full force. By the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. So a step off of 10 yards, and it'll bring up first and goal to go, and they'll back the ball back to the 14-yard line. Dennis Erickson, what a marvelous career. It is four years, 41-3, and 93% winning percentage <laughs> for the Canes. Overall, 91-34-1 and one in his long and illustrious career as a head coach already. The handoff, Donnell Pennett's in the ball game, goes to the goal line as he scores. Touchdown, Miami! Good play, so good play selection by the Hurricanes. They bring the receivers back in and go with the draw. Donnell Bennett, who has been kind of the bell cow early on this year for the Canes at running back. A healthy young man who carries the ball well out of Fort Lauderdale, and he gets an opening, and look at the blocking ahead of him. Yeah, you've got a big hole there, and you know, everybody's running at it, and they don't see him until the last minute, and he just runs over the last two defenders to get it into the end zone. Good running by Donnell Bennett. Bennett again, just a sophomore at 6'2", 227, one of the top athletes to come out of Cardinal Gibbons High School up in Fort Lauderdale. And Dane Pruitt will try to add a 10 onto the school board as the Canes lead at 9-0, 4-12 to go first period. Temple is yet to be out of their own territory. Snyder with a hole, Patterson with a snap, and the kick is up by Pruitt, and it is good. So the Canes come on a 70-yard march, culminated by the 14-yard run by Bennett, and they're on top of the Temple Owls here in our Big East game with a score of 10 to nothing at the Orange Bowl. We'll return on Sunshine Network in a moment. For the Miami Hurricanes, they put it in the end zone, and again, it's just some sheer power up front. Offensive line doing a job. Just sheer power. You see the block back. You see Diego London taking on the on the uh, linebacker there, and there's no one around him until he reaches the goal line. He runs over the last two defenders. Good job by that Hurricane offense. The Canes have come up on a 70-yard drive and seven plays. Again, Bennett with a 14-yard run for a 10-0 lead. Dane Pruitt prepares to kick off again to Lawhorn, who is the deep man number 80 for the Temple Isles. A good look at Dane Pruitt. What a big pair of shoes he had to step in with Carlos Huerta, the All-American. There's a good look at Lawhorn. Again, averaging 33.3 yards per return. He's had 14 of kickoffs so far this year. They did not kick to him the last time, you recall. Came up very, very short. Miami, by the way, has been warned by the officiating corps. You can see the line, the broad white stripe that's on the sideline, and the players must stay behind that line, and they got a warning for encroaching a little bit onto the field and got a warning from the officials. Well, it's homecoming. They're excited, <laughs> etc. You know, they're, they're 10, 10 points up, and those guys are looking to get in the ball game soon. They will kick the law horn. He has it at the five. Good move as he takes it out to the 22-yard line. And Lawhorn will put the Temple Owls in business after a 17-yard return, and they'll have it at their own 22. And again, they have yet to get out of their own territory against this defense of Miami. Malcolm Pearson was the man that came in and made the stop for the Canes, and 
Again, Linhart, the redshirt freshman from Pittsburgh, his 92 stats include 465 yards passing with a couple of touchdowns, but as I alluded to, nine interceptions so far. We also have not seen Sam Jenkins, number 18, as of yet. Cabrera has been the lone running back, and he's in there again. And they give it to him to the outside. And a good effort by Efren Cabrera as he gets it out past the 30 to the 31-yard line. And Michael Barrow is the one that finally had a time up. Good effort by Cabrera. Good effort by Cabrera, but if you notice, you, you see where they ran. Right over Trey Johnson, that All-American candidate, as they come right at you. As you can see him just keeping his legs moving staying a feet of a float as uh, I'm losing my I'm getting so excited here I'm, I'm, I'm losing my words but a great job of running by the uh, fullback there Trey Johnson 6 3 300 pounds number 67 he's at a peak scale New York and a good one at offensive tackle for Pittsburgh oh my in the backfield almost as quickly as the ball got there that was Caesar we, the ball's loose and Miami has a fumble recovery Jesse Armstead is on the bottom of the stack. Also, Darren Klein, along with Caesar, was there to knock the ball away, and Armstead comes up for the football. So the first big turnover of this football game goes to Miami. Let's watch it. They were in the backfield in a hurry. Right. Here you see Caesar hopping around the block, the guard, and there you see Jesse Armstead going in, fighting, coming up with the football. You know, when you get down there, it's a matter of strength of who wants the football the most as to who come out of there with it. Line of scrimmage will be the 28-yard line in Temple Territory with a 10-0 lead already for Miami. And Gino Toretto with a lone running back is McGuire. Two split receivers to the top of the screen. They'll give it to McGuire. There's that same hole that Bennett scored on a moment ago, and McGuire uses it to take it down to the 20. A gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. Sam, early in the program, we talked about the two great linebackers, Roman Hale and Scott Dennis, as the, the two key players for the defense, and look like Miami wants to test them because they're running right at them. We sometimes see when we've seen those good inside linebackers, and we've had our host of the games that we've had on Sunshine, some good ones in the middle, and two good ones here, but Toretta has gone over the top, hitting five of his six passes. McGuire tries to cut outside, and he will gain maybe only a yard, and that's going to be it. Thrown back hard. Slagle will get the stop. Another young man from Mesa, Arizona Community College. I've mentioned they have done a good job of recruiting people from junior college to try to bolster up a temple, but it may not be enough to save the coach's job. Here you see McGuire going off to tackle to the right, and he tries to cut back, and McClurkin is right there, head up, and uh, drives him back. McClurkin injured early on, 6'3", 275, a junior from Philly. But he's back in the lineup. Scott Holland is the man that had replaced him, but he now is injured, so McClurkin was forced into duty today. Well, McGuire tries to get to the outside. There's going to be nothing doing as they'll bring up a fourth down, and they'll still need two yards. Well, Temple's defense just spread that out all over the field. Gary Dowling, number 52 from Philadelphia, one of the top tacklers, just strung that one out and made the stop. Yeah, he does a good job of scraping off tackles, and he's, he's right there, and he steps up and beats the block of Carlos Etheridge, gets underneath him, and makes the, makes the tackle. Well, you've got the toe of Dane Pruitt. Let's see if it'll work again. The spot of the football will be at the 27. It'll be a 37-yard try. The snap is good. Snyder's hold is good, and the kick is good as well. A minute 20 left to play in this opening period, and the Canes have jumped to a 13-0 lead here. And again, a couple of field goals by Dane Pruitt, who is, I think, is starting to get more and more confidence just about every time he toes it up, particularly with Patterson, the snapper, and Snyder, the man that puts the ball down. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Joe? Well, the University of Miami starters on both offense and defense all week long have been giving these backups a hard time. They've given up uh, some 40 points in two ball games in the third and fourth quarters, the backups I'm talking about. They told them if they want to get in there and play, play with a lot of pride today, you can see by the score. It looks like it might be happening very soon. This is a Big East Conference game, of course, with Temple and the Miami Hurricanes. And, of course, next week will probably be the game to decide the championship in the Big East as it'll be Syracuse and Miami tangling once again at the Dome. And let's take a look at the numbers right now. Of course, the Canes unbeaten overall and 2-0 in the conference. Syracuse at 5-0. Boston College 2-0-1. Of course, their tie there. And West Virginia also with a tie. 
And quite obviously, it'll be one of those situations where a big ball game coming up next week that will be carried on national television, by the way. The Miami Dolphins, they're featured on Monday Night Magazine live at 7 p.m. It comes up tomorrow. How about Joe Rose along with Nat Moore? My teammates are going to be there. And Jimmy Sempolo will be the guest host as well. Check your local listings, but don't miss Monday Night Dolphin Football Magazine here live on Sunshine Network. Well, you guys are going to double team Mr. Sempolo, huh? Well, we've been waiting for this opportunity for a lifetime to take advantage of Jimmy. Bruett gets ready to kick off for a third time this afternoon after a very short drive set up by a fumble recovery by Armstead. But again, the Canes unable to punch it in for a six-pointer. They get one from Bennett early on from 14 yards away. And with a minute 20 to go in the period, another high long kick goes to Lawhorn, and he'll catch it one yard deep in the end zone, and he's coming out of there. Flag down back upfield. Well before Lawhorn reached the 15-yard line, he got a 15-yard return a yard deep in the end zone, and they stopped play to explain the option here. Must be frustrating for a talent like uh, Lawhorn, who does have some good numbers but just can't get anything done, and he knows why against the Miami Hurricanes. Well, it's got to be extremely difficult for him, uh, but, you know, Miami has given up some big plays on special teams this year, but so far they're covering well. They're, they're keeping him inside the 20, and so he's got to be frustrated, even more so being a great receiver that have not been able to get the ball. Uh, in the back, above the race, by the return team. So Temple gets another hit after the block in the back. It'll block the ball back inside the 10. They'll spot it at the 8-yard line. By the way, credit where credit is due. Dave Arnold, as you see, Jerry Byrd on the far sideline for the Temple Owls. Dave Arnold, the tight end coach and special team coach for Miami, has had his team playing very well just about all season long on kickoff returns, punt returns, and also punt and uh, kickoff coverage as well. Leonard going to the far right side intended for the wide receiver tight end Peter Cook but well over his head and that was forced by a very good pursuit inside again by Miami again another short drive and the fact they had to settle for the field goal four plays seven yards took a little less than two minutes and again Pruitt adds his second field goal of the day. What does Temple try to do here now? Obviously, the, what they're doing right now is their best that they're trying to go against the Canes, but they've got to do something to get out of the hole. Well, they, they started out the, the last series running the football and uh, fumbled it, and of course, now they're back to throwing the football. But, you know, they've got to do something to keep their defense off the field. Here we see uh, Jenkins in the ball game, and uh, you know, he's been missing the earlier part of the ball game. And I, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I've been wondering why, being that he is their most productive player. Greer will finally bring Sam Jenkins. He's from Mount Holly, New Jersey, number 18, and comes into the ball game with just a shade under 500 yards rushing, averaging about four yards per carry. Also, one of the top all-purpose yard gainers here for Temple. Here you see him just doing a good job of running with the football. He has quick feet, and then he gives you that double threat because he's the second leading receiver on their football team. He was a wide receiver last year before being moved to tailback. However, in their offense, they use their tailback very much as a receiver. He's in the block as Lenhart throwing over the middle intended for a good uh, receiver in Lawhorn. Ball got there in a hurry and Lawhorn was not ready as Armstead was there as well. So it's fourth down and put time again for the Temple Owls as the number one defense. Again, they may have been on the number two defense, but they don't have anything to argue about today. Here you see the linebackers getting a good drop and it's tough to complete these balls underneath to the receivers when you've got those great linebackers that are coming up making the hit. You also saw number four in the picture, Paul White. He has been one of the top people here. Number one in intercepts with three so far. Young man, a junior out of Tampa and Hillsboro High School. Well, Shea will have to kick out of his own end zone, and, well, that's got to be a lonely spot right now with the Canes wanting to come right at him, and Williams will feel this ball probably around the Temple 40-yard line unless Shea really gets a boomer out of there. Williams standing back at the 45. Shea using all of that time as he does send it somewhat end over end. It'll bound, and will Williams try it? He does not. He backs away from it, and the ball will be down at the 44-yard line. 35-yard punt off the toe of John Shea will set up the Miami Hurricanes in business as they have come with a couple of field goals and a touchdown to take this 13-0 lead. And Gino Toretta 
very much back in the Heisman Trophy chase. And I guess the last three ball games, particularly with Marshall Falk having, yes, he's getting over 100 yards, but he's not explosive as well as he was early in the year. Well, Marshall Falk has slowed down somewhat, but you know, Gino is coming on at the right time. It's at the end of the year where their te his team is in the hunt for a national championship, and he's the leader, and he's really produced the last three ball games. Toretta so far has thrown for. 2,186 yards, if you will, and he's throwing for a bundle here. It's Lamar Thomas at the five. I'll tell you, that was just great concentration by Lamar Thomas at that point. There was a defender coming right at him, and he never took his eyes off the ball, concentrated on catching the ball, knowing he was going to get hit, making a big play for the Hurricane. Here you see Toretta play action, goes back, and he has Lamar Thomas wide open, so he just hangs it up high. As you can see, good job of just concentrating. You don't see him looking for the looking to see who's going to hit him. He catches the football first and goes down. Big play by the Hurricanes. Great execution by Gino Toretta and Lamar Thomas. Well, Thomas making the catch and Angelo making the stop for Temple that saved the six points as Thomas gets it. After a long pass and run, it's the end of the period. And the Miami Hurricanes have enjoyed a good, successful 15 minutes. They're on top of the Owls with a score of 13 to nothing here on homecoming day at the Orange Bowl in Miami. We'll be back with more sunshine coverage of the Canes in a moment. Miami Hurricanes, number one in the country on both the Associated Press, CNN, and USA Today poll. LaVar Thomas setting up a potential another score with a 39-yard reception and a 13-0 lead already. And Lamar Thomas, one of those guys that is only one touchdown shy of tying a seasonal record for nine touchdown passes in a season for Miami. Toretta first and goal. They'll have it just outside the five-yard line. Marucci's in the ball game to block, and they're throwing, and it's going to be complete. Is it good? It is. Touchdown. Thrown right over the middle, and they throw it for an easy score, and Miami comes up with a touchdown for the Canes. So Gino Toronto with his 45th touchdown throw, and Tucker is the man that's on the end of the receiving line. Just another play action pass, you know, that when you can run the football, that creates plenty of separation for the tight end when they block down and then sneak out. And here you see Tucker coming wide open and doing a good job of catching the football. That, by the way, is his first touchdown pass. And the point after by Pruitt, and it didn't waste the Canes much time that time after the 39-yard pass to set it up. And it's seven more points on the board, and a 20 to nothing floodgate is starting to open here, and Gino Toretta is starting to feel his oats again early here against the Temple Owls. You see the time remaining before halftime. It is Miami 20, and the Temple Owls nothing. Back with more after this. The Canes have used every form of scoring a couple of field goals, a running touchdown, and now a touchdown pass from Toretta going into Saeed Tucker. And his first career touchdown a reception as a hurricane. And he does it the old-fashioned way, just dives and makes a great catch. The second-year freshman out of Oklahoma City, Douglas High. So the Canes again with a commanding 20 to nothing lead here with 14.54 left to play. And it'll be Pruitt kicking off once again to Lawhorn for the Temple Owls. Ball game going just about as we probably expected it here as you see the win briskly blowing over the stadium rim. And of course on our open you could see trying to blow us off the top deck here at the Orange Bowl. Threw it out of Birmingham approaches. And Lawhorn will catch this one at the nine. Had a pretty good wall used it for a moment to get out to the 24 yard line. 13 yard return. Let's take a look at that uh, pass reception in the pass number 45 on a career for Toretta. Here you see Toretta coming out to his right. You see the tight end able to slip out in the flat behind uh, the defender and come up with the touchdown. So again, a couple of running backs in there to block once again. And you see the uh, short time it's needed for the Canes to score on that one as they come up in only 18 seconds and get the easy score to go up on the score of 20 to nothing. Palisak will be the new quarterback now as Miami already with 10 first downs and Temple yet to having one. Palisak already looking a little confused. He runs out of there and throws that one away intended for Washington. And when he turned and Jenkins was right in his face in the backfield, he's kind of pointing, hey, you're supposed to go the other way. What are you doing over here? Well, good look at the sophomore here. Palisak 
He's another young man that's had trouble with interceptions. He's at 10 with only a couple of touchdown passes so far this year. Well, they're, they're, they're just really having a tough time offensively trying to get anything established against this hurricane front four, which is allowing Miami to drop seven people, which is going to make it a very tough day if you've got to throw the football. You've got to be able to run it against this front four and make the linebackers stay home. Alisak had a career, excuse me, a school record five interceptions against him uh, by the Zips of Akron. Here is Armstead with a big hit after the reception is made. Sigler scooped up the ball. But it was after the reception, after Mark Caesar had knocked him down. Again, Jenkins. Look at this hit by Armstead. Ooh, those linebackers can stick you, can't they? Yeah, they, they, they know how to fill the hole, and uh, they've uh, <laughs> they're ranked as the best set of linebackers in the country, and that is a perfect reason why. By the way, we made mention that, of course, Michael Barrow and Darren Smith are the. Semi-finalists for the Dick Butkus, the Outstanding Linebacker Award. Very shortly, they'll be cutting that list down to a short three and then naming the recipient. Personal foul called on the Canes, and Palisak will have a little bit more running room. And Jerry Burnt. So that'll bring up a third down and four yards needed here for Temple. Again, third down and the four yards needed here. Total yards, you can see Miami well ahead in that number early on. As Temple, it's been three and out just about every play until this series. Pass complete to the near side, and Peter Cook, again the tight end, slipping out and takes it past the 35 to the 36-yard line before Darren Smith, the dropping linebacker, can make the stop on him. Timeout momentarily stopped here again by the referee as there's a flag down across the field. While we have a moment, Darren Smith, number 45 for the Canes, has just been named as a 1992 National Scholar Athlete, a 3.2 grade point average, completing his degree in three and a half years in business management. And now, of course, pursuing a master's degree in business administration. He'll be honored along with the other top athletes later on in December. Look at Gino Toretta as he just kind of enjoys a kind of a balmy afternoon here, overcast at the Orange Bowl, but he's already had a solid day, and it'll be interesting to see how long Dennis Erickson does indeed with his 20 to nothing score. We're not advocating to take the first teamers out yet, but it'll be interesting to see how long he stays with a majority of the starters today. A step off against the Temple Owls will take it back to a third down, and they need 18. Palisak under pressure throws to Fredericks. He has it out to near the original line of scrimmage, which was the 24. Knocked off his feet. Michael Barrow was one that met him. And also coming up was Jesse Armstead. Kind of under fire when those two defensive lines start crashing in around you. All right, you see Darren Cron and Mark Caesar doing a good job of breaking that pocket down and. Uh, quarterback was able to step up and get the ball to Fredericks but uh, not for the first down and that penalty really hurt him because they had the first down that by the way was only the seventh reception of the entire year for Fredericks as John Shea will have to punt on this fourth down and ten and again William should get some good field position to work and a good high punt will give him some air and dirty does not call for the fair catch and he is has the ball knocked out of his hands there's a scramble for it on the far side Harris Harris I believe number six was over there to pounce on it for Miami after again the fumble was made and the Temple Owls are quite elated that they came up with a stick after that 35 point punt. And again Kevin Williams just trying to look for that one elusive uh, punt return and just has not been able to find it very much different from this year and last year as we look at it again right. here yeah. here you see a very frustrated young man because he knows of his ability and as you see every time he's catching the ball there's someone there hitting him as he catches the ball not giving him a chance to get turned up field get started and here you see him turns it loose turn it loose and the owls come up with the fumble so whenever you have a great punt returner or a kickoff returner a lot of it depends on their on their teammates and whether they're able to hold up that that rush coming down to give you a chance to get started up field. If Kevin can get started up field, then we'll see the old Kevin. But so far this year, he has not had that opportunity. Well, let's check that. We had thought that uh, 
Terrace Harris had come up with it, but instead, number 46 indeed had recovered the ball, and that, of course, is Roman Hale, their free spirit from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Their number two tackler, and it gives Temple their first penetration into Miami territory all afternoon long, and it'll be at the 38-yard line. Palisak, who has come off the bench, being replaced by Linhart as the starting quarterback today, anyway. Fredericks in motion to the left. They pass it over right over the middle, and that's Cook. Gain of about seven on the play as Temple Nat just starts to kind of peck away at Miami now. Well, they're pecking away, and, and one of the things that the Temple offense like to do is throw to the tight ends. There's, uh, there's very few teams in college football that go to the tight end as much as Temple and Miami does. By the way, against Akron last week, we made mention of the five interceptions by Palisak. They had eight turnovers total, six interceptions and two fumbles, giving up 26 points to the Zips. And the loss by the Temple Owls last week, again, only one and eight as they come to this game today. Washington in motion. They give it to Cabrera. Cabrera may have it up for the first down as he powers his way inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Mark Caesar on the stop. Let's go down to Joe Rose. Thank you, guys. Jerry Byrne had said to me before the ball game it was very important. He was going to work off a three-step and a five-step and throw the ball. They're going to try to get the ball to their tight ends and to the running back, but keep it quick without any sacks today. He felt that was the key for the Temple Owls. Well, the Owls again trying to look for that little quickness here. They tried that early on, but Miami just wouldn't let them have anything early. Well, they, when they were trying it early, they were throwing the ball out wide. And, and you know, when you got guys like Darren Kryan, Ker uh, Kevin Patrick, it's kind of hard to throw it over the outstretched arms of these guys. So now he's throwing it in the middle and just trying to find that little open seam in, in the uh, defense. Palisak checking off at the line of scrimmage. Didn't like what he saw in the defense for Miami, even though they're still in their 4-3. Cabrera to the outside, outrunning Darren Smith. Nice move as he's banged out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. And a good run as he took off to the races on that one and uh, turned that corner on some good blocking before Casey Greer could finally make the stop. Yeah, Cabrera showed a lot of speed there where he was able to turn the corner and run away from Darren Smith, who is the fastest receiver for the Hurricanes. Here you see uh, Barrow being blocked, but if we get her over to where the play is. Boy, they're taking care of I'll Michael. I'll tell you though. what, you're talking about having two guys on the on the barrel there. Cabrera again, a little bit of a surprise. Started in the backfield. Sam Jenkins, their top running back, was scheduled to start at tailback. Cabrera, a senior co-captain, is starting instead. Palasak has to throw that one very quickly. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage right at the 20-yard line. He overthrew Fredericks, just trying to throw the ball away. Stops the clock with 11.29. Still left to go here in the second period. A 20-0 score. Miami in the lead. Offsides against the Canes. That'll certainly help Temple. And Dennis Erickson, even though he looks at the scoreboard and likes what he sees, doesn't like this kind of thing to happen. Now, anytime your team come back, you're coming off our off week, and uh, you're playing a little sloppy right now. And, you know, you, you can't afford to let that creep into your, your, your program because... You know, they've got Syracuse next week, and you know, if they make these mistakes against Syracuse, they'll be in for a long day at the Carrier Dome. By the way, Temple will close out their year as they'll play Rutgers next week in their final game of the season for the Temple Owls. Again, Miami will play at Syracuse and finish the year on the 28th at San Diego State. A couple of tough ones on the road. It's a first down, and off Cabrera. Michael Barrow was right there, and it's no place to go for Cabrera. Well, the linebackers ever so active. And, of course, Michael Barrow, the number one tackler on this ball club, had 88 coming to the game and comes off of 19 as a career against Penn State early this year. He was just all over the field against the Nittany Lions. Oh, well, that, that was a, just a great call by the defensive coordinator where they go in the uh, uh, undershift defense and bring Michael Barrow on a blitz right up the middle, and he's there making the tackle. Still a second down. It is a second and still the 10 yards needed here. The ball at the 25 in Miami territory. Penalties have helped as Temple has their best penetration. That's Paul White, number four. A junior from Tampa, Florida, out defending. Trying to knock the ball away from Frederick and did a job on it. Paul White again with three interceptions to lead this ball club. On the opposite side of him is Ryan McNeil. And still we're hearing rays from the pros about Ryan McNeil is going to be a good one. Well, Ryan McNeil, is, without a doubt, is their best corner. And that's one reason Paul White's able to have so many, pick off so many interceptions, because they're staying away from Ryan McNeil. And as you see there, Paul White does a good job of breaking on the football and either coming up with the interception or the pick or knocking it down. 
Now Temple's yet to convert on a third down play today, and this is a third and ten at the 15. But look at Palasek as he calls the signals, and Cabrera will try to gain the yardage he needs. Still running at the 10, fighting for the chain, but will not get there. And he'll be a couple of yards shy of a first down here for Temple. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, Cabrera has been most impressive today, the way he's run that football. Yeah, he's a good, tough runner, and uh, he, he make you think a lot of uh, the, the Miami backs because of their ability to, to keep their legs driving. Here you see Zara fighting off all the block and doing a good job of coming off and helping make the tackle downfield. So Temple's going to go for it on a fourth and two. Will they go to Cabrera? Well, they need actually a little over a yard and a half. Palasak turns. He's got to throw for the fourth down. He gets pressure. He throws under pressure. It's going to be incomplete, and that one was all set up by Darren Prine. Prine, one of the top sack people in the entire league, and, of course, he comes up with a good one there, and the ball goes over to Miami on a missed fourth down play. Good job by Darren Prine of avoiding the block of uh, Cabrera and then just hanging with him, getting his arms on uh, Palasak and not allowing him to set up and throw the football. Cook was the intended receiver down at the two-yard line. So offensive time for Miami, leading 20 to nothing with just under 10 minutes to play. And Cook, along with Jerry Byrne, having a conversation on the near sideline. Did he run the right pattern or not? They have been a little bit deep for the tight end to run for Palisak to have time to throw to him. Well, he was open. He, he was open in the end zone, but Palisak just wasn't able to get anything off, anything on the football and didn't have time to throw because of Darren Klein's uh, ability to get in the backfield. Do you know Toretta? Fakes the handoff to Bennett. He's throwing over the middle. It's going to be complete to Thomas as he makes the diving catch at the 34-yard line. How about uh, this man, Lamar Thomas? What kind of pro is he going to make, Nat Moore? I think he's going to be a great uh, pro uh, prospect because he has the ability to bounce back. He'll have some bad games. He can have some, set, some, some things happen to him, but he never gives up on his own ability and have that self-doubt. Here you see him just doing a great job of getting his body down with the football so he can come up with the catch. You saw coming up again, Nelson, the rover, trying to stop Lamar Thomas, the senior out of Gainesville. And also Angelo, the free safety was over, but not in time, as Bennett already with a touchdown to his credit today, rambles his way out of the 40 to the 42-yard line. Bennett came into this ballgame with 342 yards rushing, averaging nearly five per carry. His longest being only 17 yards so far this year, though. Gary Downing tied as their number two tackler with 70 makes the stop for Temple. Here we see, if we look back at the monitor, once again, Daniel Bennett coming through, running through that first tackler, and then you see Downing coming down with the tackle. Second down and about two yards needed here for Miami. Toretta back. Little dump in right over the middle. He's got the tight end, Coleman Bell, and Bell's going to do the rest of it on his own before finally being ran out of bounds by Scott Dennis, the inside linebacker. And one of the things that Toretto has enjoyed is some time to throw the football. And, of course, with those great receivers, many of them taking them deep just underneath it's Coleman Bell who's had a great year. Well, Coleman Bell, without a doubt, as you see him here faking the block, now he just checks down. He's an outlet receiver. Toretto does a good job looking downfield, then coming off to his outlet receiver, and Bell runs well after the catch. Now, coming into this ball game, he was the leading receiver on the Hurricane uh, football team last week against uh, West Virginia. He had eight receptions, so he's a good one. Well, he's made 35 coming to the game for over 507 yards, averaging nearly 15 per carry. Now, there's some discussion going on the Temple sideline for some reason. By the way, back to the offensive line and giving Toretta time to throw. Boy, this has been a marvelous story. Greg Smith, again, the assistant head coach and offensive line man, is... He's done a great, great job in rebuilding that offensive line as, again, we look at uh, an injury across the way here on the sideline. I believe that's one of the officials. It is. I think one of the officials got rolled up on that last play when uh, they were going over to the sideline. But uh, you know, getting back to that offensive line of the Hurricanes and, and what, what a fantastic job uh, Coach Greg Smith has done. You know, you're talking about losing Rudy Barber, who was the first guy to come in this year uh, that had any experience. And uh, as we look at their 50-game uh, winning streak here at home and the uh, 26-game uh, longest streak consecutive wins in the uh, country, but that offensive line has had a transformation that's unbelievable. Getting Diego London, Carlos Etheridge, who's a tight end now, is a converted tackle. 
Earlier in the year, they not only could not run the football, they could not pass protect for Geno. And now you see in the last three ball games, going into the fourth ball game, that they've been able to run the football with success. They've been able to throw the ball with success. And today is just a perfect example of uh, what a good coaching job Mr. Smith has done. First and 10 for Miami as Toretta gives the handoff to Bennett. There'll be no place to go, and he is a loss of two as the inside of the Temple defense drops down. Let's go downstairs again to Joe Rose. Joe? Thank you, guys. Uh, Temple Owls are having trouble stopping the run defensively right now. What they're going to try to do is mix in that five-man front that you see now with the Arizona Wildcats. It's worked very well. They want to force them to throw the ball, believe it or not, so they can't control the ball running. Very interesting trying to throw to the strengths for sure. Nine of ten for Toretta, 154 yards and a TD already today. And again, out of the shotgun, something they started early in the year and they've stayed with, mostly because of a rebuilding line. He throws off to Bennett. Bennett down to the 40-yard line. That'll be shy of a first down by about four. As that'll bring up a third down and four yards to go. Crispina from Philadelphia. Keitha, a senior at 5'9", 186, makes the stop after the catch by Bennett. Here you have Miami just running a little screen pass out here to Bennett. And the uh, Owl defense does a good job of coming up, getting under the blockers, because he's got blockers out front, but Donnell runs off and leaves his blockers, and uh, Crispina comes up and makes the tackle. Good look at Donnell Bennett. You see the sophomore, the fullback, who once again one of the top runners this year for the Miami Hurricanes. Canes only one of three on third down conversions, and they'll see if they can get this one. They do to Williams. Williams, those quick feet, gets it all the way down inside the 25. He'll spot it at the 24-yard line, and that is the bread and butter before the linebacker, Scott Dennis, can catch up. Well, that's what you want to do with a Kevin Williams, is just get the ball in his hands with some running room because the first guy will never bring Kevin Williams down if he's got time to turn, up, turn around here and face up. First guy missed, second guy missed, and you see him get him from the backside. Otherwise, he's off to the races. Toretta, we made mention how well he has thrown the football with that 63% over the last three ball games. He's had three straight games, by the way, that he has had three touchdown passes. He's had one so far this afternoon, and he's missed only one pass today. The handoff to Bennett going to the outside of the 20-yard line. By the way, in that big game against West Virginia at one stage, he was just one completion away. At one point, he had 13 straight passes, only one away from Testaverde's 14 in a row. Statistically, you see Toretta there averaging 271.75 yards. He is number five in the country, and you see some of the good ones, including Ward up at Florida State, a real scrambler, but throwing the ball well. Well, I would say at this point, Toretta's playing better than any one of those guys with what he's doing for this Hurricane football team. He's got some fans, obviously, here in family and otherwise. As Toretta on a second down throw. Throwing to Bennett. Bennett was not ready for that one. That was... Supposed to be a little turn in, I think, but Bennett was just flying to the end zone. <laughs> a little miscue. Uh, wrong you know, they, page, were on the, right? they were on the wrong page. <laughs> Toretta wanted five yards, and Bennett wanted the touchdown. <laughs> you know, as you see here, he just grabs it, throws it out there, and Bennett never turns and looks for the ball. But he's thinking touchdown all the way. It's one of those things. Gino throws the ball and says, Donnell, well, what the heck? It goes out of bounds. Donnell <laughs> said, Gino, don't throw me the five-yard pass. I want the bomb. I want to have some fun. Sebastian the Ibis, he has been everywhere in this stadium. You see that he kind of enjoys the company of all of the fans that come out to watch Kane's football at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Glad you could join us on Sunshine Network to right on a third down play. Over the middle, that one is, a matter of fact, off the leg of Angelo. The defender and out of the reach of Williams. Almost looked like he reached, but just didn't quite have long enough arms on it. Bring up a fourth down, and they will try another field goal by Dane Pruitt, who's got two already today. Miami just dominating from the line of scrimmage and yardage so far. And on the board, 20 to nothing. Here you see uh, Kevin Williams coming across, and looked like he just misjudged that, or, or as the term is used frequently in football, short-armed it. But that, that was a catchable ball there. Tom Patterson with a snap. Snyder with a hole. The kick by Pruitt. And this one's going to be a knuckleball. But it's going to be no good and off to the left. A 37-yard try. And the confidence that Pruitt had built on a 42 and 37-yarder early as he thinks about it going to the sideline. And he stops the clock with 6.03 left to play before halftime. And the Miami Hurricanes have enjoyed a successful afternoon already, leading the Temple Owls with a score of 20 nothing here on homecoming day at the Orange Bowl. Miami, but they've got a little more trouble already missing uh, Patrick uh, Riley out with a shoulder separation. More trouble. Let's go to Joe Rose. 
Thank you, guys. Kenny Lopez, the defensive tackle for the Miami Hurricanes, will not return. He has a sprained right ankle. Number 71, Lopez out of that means that Warren Sapp, number 76, is going to get a lot more play time as it's first and 10 to go for Temple. Palisak again, the quarterback giving off to Cabrera. And I tell you what, I don't know where Cabrera's been hiding for Temple, but if Sam Jenkins is their leading at rusher, I'd like to see him in his heyday because Cabrera has run circles around him today. Well, I talked with their offensive coordinator, and about four ball games ago, they switched their entire offense and went to the one-back offense, and that's what took Cabrera out of the system. But here you can see he's just a big, strong runner that will run over people. Senior from Keysport, New York. Has done a good job as he gains just shy of enough for the first down. Gains nine on the play. Second down and a yard needed. Alasak, the sophomore out of North Huntington, Pennsylvania. Gives off to Cabrera again, and they do have enough for the first down. Michael Barrow, the inside linebacker from Homestead, who, by the way, reports to us that his hometown of Homestead is rebuilding nicely, thank you. And he does indeed. They extend his thanks not only to all of the people watching on Sunshine Network, but wherever you might be viewing on Prime Network. A lot of great help have come in. And Michael Barrow and Homestead send their thanks and their heartfelt wishes for you to have a very, very happy holiday season coming up on Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. First down and 10 for Temple. 4.56 and counting in the second period. A 20 to nothing lead. Temple threatened, you may recall, but couldn't come up with any points. Palisac. Dump off again goes to Cook, and that is Darren Smith with a quick hit after the reception and a gain of only two. One of the nice things about it, Miami does not go into a lot of what we call the nickel defense because of the quickness of their linebackers. Well, their linebackers are just as good as their defensive backs and, and, and the ability to run and, and play guys one on one. And here you see Darren Smith using his speed, even though he went for the play action to spin out, come there, and he's on, in on the tackle once again to hold it to a two-yard gain. You have to keep in mind that the linebackers are responsible for that running back first, and then the tight ends coming out or anyone else coming out, and that time you saw how quickly Smith reacted to the play. Second down at eight, Temple. Their own 34-yard line, Cabrera behind the blocking of that left side and again behind Trey Johnson. Gets knocked down by Barrow once again after gaining about two or three more yards. It's giving four on the play, and now a little scuffle breaks out. Flags fly everywhere over the field. John Smith looked like the referee of the Holyfield Bowl fight there last night. <laughs> Riddick Bowl, the new heavyweight champion of the world. Dennis Erickson looking on saying, what in the world is going on? Unsportsmanlike conduct going against Temple. Unsportsmanlike against Miami. I guess we call those offsetting penalties. Uh, you know, it, it, you you wonder if they're ever going to call it and it's going to make a difference. <laughs> you know, they always call it on both teams, but it's a way of stopping the action, and that's why they do that. Here you see, once again, they've got a little twist on the defense, and you've got Cesar coming around, but Michael Barrow is just unbelievable and how he knows where the ball is going to go. He does a good job of getting into the hole before the play develops and stopping him for a short game. Good shot of Trey Johnson, number 67, blocking on Jesse Armstead, number one for the Kings. Did a good job to kick him out of the coverage there. A third down play. Palisak gets it complete to Cook again. And Peter Cook makes the reception and takes it enough for the first down for Temple. So again, peck, peck, peck away, but no score yet for Temple. Malcolm Pearson, the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, makes the stop. Well, on homecoming day here at the Orange Bowl, coming up at halftime, we'll have some halftime highlights and statistics for you. And Leonard Hamilton is ready to tap off a brand new basketball season for the Hurricane basketball people. And we'll be visiting with him what to expect from the Canes in round ball this year. Round ball featured on Sunshine Network. Very busy schedule for you. Hope you'll join us. First and 10 for Temple. Fredericks in motion for Temple. They're throwing to Frederick. He's there and scouted at the 35-yard line. And a flag goes down as a late hit out of bound, and that's going to be on Pearson, number 38. You saw also back there was number 45. That, of course, is Darren Smith. But again, a hit out of bounds by Pearson. Will tack on 15 to a nice 27-yard play. Here you see Temple do a good job of isolating Fredericks on Darren Smith. And Pearson comes over. He hits him late, and he just can't do that. But, you know, smart play calling by the the Owls offense to try and get that isolation where 
Darren Smith have to cover in the length of the football field. Nat, they also had set that up a little bit by throwing that underneath coverage, the little short things, even though Palisak has had not had a lot of time to throw. They set that up by throwing short, and then they hit the big one here. All right, they've been going to the tight end time after time again, and, you know, you, you get the safeties to hang in there to, to look at that tight end, and all of a sudden you've got your receiver going down the sideline on a linebacker. So the personal foul on Miami has Temple in business at the 16-yard line, make it the 15-yard line. Again, they have reached the 15 in Miami territory. They came up short the last time. Let's see what happens here. Cabrera to the outside. Armstead says no, and he knocks him down for about a four-yard loss. By the way, Michael Barrow getting up very, very slowly back at the original line of scrimmage and hobbling a bit. But nonetheless, Armstead with a great open field tackle here. Good job of avoiding the stiff arm. As you see, Cabrera there puts that stiff arm out and... Armstead just does a good job of going down, grabbing the legs, and taking his legs out from under him. Armstead, of good course, tackle. coming out of Carter High School in Dallas. A senior that uh, a lot of people felt he was not going to reach his potential, but now in his fourth year, a true senior, he has certainly come to the fore, along with Barrow and Smith, as the best of the three linebackers in this country. Palisak throwing near sideline. He's got Washington. I believe that may be his first catch of the day. Wilbur, their big gun, their number one receiver with 21 inceptions coming in, makes the catch. But they're going to get it just near, uh, about a yard past the original line of scrimmage down to the 14-yard line. Well, Palisak gets lucky here because Ryan O'Neill reads this all the way, and you see him break on the ball. He just mistimed it. Oh, that's Dexter Siegler that mistimed it, going for the pick. So at 2.28 left to play, and again, a good look at Washington as he makes the reception. The junior split in out of Tucson, Arizona. They've done a good job of getting some junior college people. And Dennis Erickson's error, Hurricanes right now lead it by the score of 20 to nothing before halftime. Expected having their way with a 20 to nothing lead over the Temple Owls in this Big East Conference game at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Canes trying to add their 51st consecutive home victory to the List of scouts here, and they're 27th in a row overall for the NCAA so far, the current longest record. Well, a sack for Temple. He has a third down, but it is nine yards needed for a first down. And action across the line of scrimmage before that one gets underway in a hurry. Stopping the clock with 227 before the halftime break. Miami indicates they were drawn off by some movement of the ball. And Mr. John Smith, our referee, concurs, and it's a step off against the Temple Owls. Jerry Byrne calling this play from the sideline. Miami's number one defense staying in there. And again, the second unit in the last two ball games have given up 20 points in each of the last fourth quarters against Virginia Tech and West Virginia, and that did not bode well for that first defense. Well, that's really hurt their chances of, uh, as we stated earlier, of uh, repeating as the nation's number one scoring defense. And, you know, it's kind of tough when you work all year to be the best. And then, uh, you know, the second team comes in and just don't have the pride to get it done to maintain that uh, defensive efficiency. By the way, I was just looking at the officiating core, and I believe they are going to be working with one man shy, the injured referee let me check them here in a minute uh, three four yeah they are working one man shy at the moment I believe so the injured official was taken off the field and uh, has not come back as of yet here before the end of the half a third down and after the step off against Temple at the 20 yard line Alisak you saw the numbers on him a moment ago has done surprisingly well hitting six out of nine passes under pressure and this one is going to be up for grabs and intercepted Sigler has it at the 20 he could go he cannot run that lineman. Can he do it? He does, and Sigler's going to go all the way. Great run after the interception. 89 yards by Dexter Sigler. When you talk about the Hurricane defense, they are electrifying. They find a way to come up with the big play. Sigler getting his first intercept, and again, Palisak, who enjoyed success, got this one a tip and a touchdown on the other end. All right, here you see the ball coming off of uh, Washington. Washington's hands, and uh, Dexter Sigler just in the right place, right time, breaking on the ball, and then turning on the speed. Now, you see when he starts to lean that head back, that's like a having a refrigerator on your back, but he was able to go 89 yards as he was a little winded in the end. Segler, a junior. 
Avon Park in Florida will add on the six and let's see if Dane Pruitt can put the seventh and he does. So before the halftime break with 2-10 left to play the Canes just that quickly their defense bowing their neck a bit to come up with a seven pointer and a 27 to nothing lead over the Temple Owls here on homecoming afternoon and the crowd is loving every moment of it today. Jerry Byrne is the only guy along with his football team that's come here from Philadelphia that has not enjoyed the last play. Here you see Palisak, he, he has his man Washington coming in underneath, but as Washington goes to catch the ball, he's looking at Jesse Armstead, he takes his eyes off the ball, and Siegel just does a good job of reacting to the tip ball and then running through an arm tackle here, you see, and then getting up the sideline for the touchdown. Good job of running by Dexter Siegler for the TD. And that refrigerator was getting a little heavier, right? It got a little heavy there. Well, speaking of great hurricane people, uh, Joe Rose has a very special feature for us downstairs. Joe, let's go to you. Hamilton will be with me at halftime, but right now I want to talk a little bit about the trading cards the Miami Hurricanes and Bumblebee have uh, come up with, Bumblebee Tuna, have come up with a great card. They've given out 25,000 sets of football cards today. There's about 45,000 people here, so you can imagine a lot of excited football kids here today. Rather interesting that uh, already signing some autographs. A good look at Sigler there, and off to the races here in that interception. Yeah, he's, he, right about there is when he says, I've got him beat, but that refrigerator just won't come off his back. And here he knows he's got the six. And look who's running behind him, the big Trey Johnson. We talk about 300-pounder, and you see him giving some effort, not giving up, and still trying to come back and make a big play for the uh, offense. Other games in the Big East today, of course, the one, the big one at the bottom, Syracuse at Boston College. Syracuse trying to stay unblemished in the conference and get ready for their showdown against Miami coming up next week, and that'll be one of the highlight games. Temple, by the way, again, closes their season against Rutgers. Well, Dane Pruitt is going to wear out that right shoe. Kicks off again here in this first half. And Lawhorn, who's had some just near misses on the runbacks, gets that wall again up the middle, but it breaks down in a hurry. Richardson, number 19, was one of the first to reach him. And then got some help from his friends. They collapse in a hurry. Robert Bass, number 49, was one of the other special teamers down there for Miami. Well, Miami's doing a good job of coming down on that kickoff coverage and... and the Owls are trying to set up what, we, what you call a wedge where they can just bust him up through there and split it, but they're doing a good job of taking out that wedge and, and taking away his blocker so he's not able to get off to the races today. Miami, of course, likes to set the wedge, if you will, to the outside. Temple likes to do it right up the middle. Right up the middle. Palisak is the quarterback again as the Owls were threatening a moment ago, but for the second time that they did that at the 15-yard line, they were thrown back for the defense. And here's the handoff, and Jenkins, number 18, is in the ball game again. By the way, that 89-yarder uh, was the sixth longest uh, punt return, excuse me, interception return in uh, University of Miami history. 89 yards, again, by Sigler. Robert Bass made the last stop on the play. Again, that was Raphael Mack, number 28, instead of Jenkins carrying the football. Mack, a sophomore from Trenton, New Jersey, is the lone running back behind Palisac right now. Their two best receivers, Washington and Lawhorn, are split to the near side. A second down and eight yards for Temple. They give it to Mack again. Pretty good hole for him in the middle. And he gets enough for a first down for Temple again as they refuse to kind of fold up and go away with a minute 16 to go before halftime. Well, they're, they're doing a... They're still trying to run the football and, uh, and get something established where they'll it'll help them throw the football. But here you see Rohan Marley... You know, Miami has their second team uh, linebackers in, and they're just a little late in getting up, stopping that play before they gained uh, nine yards, first down. Bruce Eberst, by the way, one of the reserve linebackers, a senior, fifth-year senior from Palmetto High School in Miami, along with Marley. He's just a freshman, a redshirt, also from Palmetto High. Son of the legendary reggae senior, Bob. Here's the handoff again going to Mack, and... Just as we saw a moment ago, they started the ball game again with Cabrera. Then they came in with Jenkins only for a play or two, and now they've come with another running back in Raphael Mack. Well, you know, this is just tough luck. On that last play, Raphael Mack breaks through, Rohan Marley runs by him, and he trips and falls with blockers on the last two defenders with no one tackling. You know, you've got to 
be able to capitalize when you do have an excellent play. And, and so far, the Owls have not been able to do that. Got to love Marley, 5'8", 200-pound freshman. He's like a little fire plug out there, but hits like a Mack truck. And speaking of Mack getting hit, he is as he gets the handoff, and no place to go there is Mark Caesar, fifth-year senior out of Newark, New Jersey, West Side. There's a flag down in the play after Caesar got in the backfield. You know, Mark has played with the intensity everybody had hoped he would. They said he had to have a good year for the Kane defense to play well. Now they thought he would become the next Russell Maryland or Cortez Kennedy, and now he's starting to show that he had two sacks in the last ball game, and today he's been in the backfield all day. So, you know, he's starting to rise to the occasion, and it's the opportune time for him to start doing that with Syracuse coming up next. Unfortunately, a personal foul on the Canes, not so much on Mark Caesar, but somebody coming in underneath. We'll step it off, and Dennis Erickson on the sideline. You can see he's waiting for this eight seconds to go away. He does not have his headsets on anymore. He's ready to hit for the locker room with his 27 nothing lead. And now Temple's going to call a timeout. So with eight seconds to play and down 27 to nothing, the Owls want to throw up a special play here before the halftime. Uh, create a little trick play of some sort. You know, a throwback to the quarterback lateral for Bum. By the way, we'd like to make mention as well. We mentioned the 19 seniors that are be honored here today for their final home game, saving, of course, an appearance by the Canes in the Orange Bowl, which is somewhat unlikely at the moment. We'd also like to pay a special tribute to a young man by the name of Kevin Gibbs. He was a fullback at a Coral Gables High School. He died in a tragic auto accident in December of 89, and he would have been one of the graduating seniors here at the University of Miami had he not met that tragic death. And again, to Kevin Gibbs, and again, all of his family. I know all of these 19 seniors certainly send their regrets that he is not able to enjoy this special day for the Hurricanes. Well, the Hurricanes' remaining schedule, we made mention the big showdown of the Big East. That'll be at the Carrier Dome, inside the Dome, next Saturday, and then against Michael, uh, excuse me, Marshall Falk and San Diego State on the final game of the season, November the 28th, in regular season. And then what's ahead? How about the bowl games? It looks likely... Miami against Alabama in the Sugar Bowl could be the most likely scenario for a national championship. That, that would be the likely scenario to get one versus two. But if uh, Florida goes up and plays Alabama and beats Alabama and Florida goes to the Sugar Bowl, then the next choice would be the Cotton Bowl against Texas A&M. Palisak will air it out on the final play, and there's Paul White with his fourth interception of the year. And White with a helmet off saying thank you very much. And the second interception, and White turned around and said, I couldn't go 89 yards. I was falling down with it, but the intercept, and that's the final play of the first half of the game. So the Canes defense that may have been in the fourth quarter of the last two ball games rears its head again and ends it on a fine defensive play as White makes the intercept and a pass intended for Lawhorn. From Miami, the Orange Bowl, the first half is complete with the number one ranked Miami Hurricanes enjoying a comfortable 27-0 lead over the Temple Owls. We'll start our halftime and more from the Orange Bowl after this timeout on Sunshine Network. Ball here to start the third quarter. David McLaughlin will be kicking off and kicking deep down to Kevin Williams at the six-yard line. Williams, a little opener after the 30-yard line, will be banged out of bounds just over the 35. And that's where the Kings will get it first and 10 here to start the third period of the game. Williams and Jonathan Harris, very dangerous kick returners. A 29-yard return by Kevin Williams. Gino Toretta with 180 yards and apparently a penalty as well thrown against Temple. I think we've got a late hit after uh, Kevin was out of, out of bounds. Diego London. Now yeah, they're calling offsides, offsides against Temple on the kick. Miami, I'm sure, will refuse that and take the ball at the 35. And that's exactly what our referee. Good look at some of the gentlemen who again made up the 36 members who are attending from the 1950 and the 1951 Orange Bowl and Gator Bowl teams. They're honored here at the University of Miami, and they put on just a couple of pounds along the way, but nonetheless, some good sturdy men that have come here to enjoy a very special day in University of Miami history homecoming on this 1992 day. Here's a pass almost picked off and intercepted. Crispina stepping right in front of Kevin Williams and he had that one time pretty good even though Toretta had thrown it right on the string. Yeah, he, had a, he did a good job of uh, reading the route here of uh, Kevin Williams and he breaks on the ball and he just don't come down with the interception. I think uh, Kevin had a lot to do with pulling it out. 
playing defender. By the way, we were receiving some notes here at halftime, and let me back up and give a little credit where credit is due. Dexter Sigler, who had that 89-yard interception for a TD, that was his second interception. I indicated his first. He did have one earlier this year. And off Donnell Bennett, the running back, trying to string it out to the near sideline. It will be knocked off his feet at the 40-yard line. Third down play. They'll need five to the Canes after taking this opening kickoff of the third period. Excuse me, that was going to be Larry Jones. Jones, 23. Bennett, number 33. Crespina, number two, coming up along with Coles to make the stop for Temple. Jerry Burns must be a very tough week with all of the dark clouds that are hanging over his program at Temple and the possibility of him not returning as the head coach at Temple next year. You know, Toretta already with a good afternoon going. And the hunt for the Heisman probably needs to get that into the mid-200s, though, for an impressive afternoon. And they'll try to get the first down on the ground and will be short of it by about a yard and a half as Jeffcoat, the nose guard from the Temple House, makes the first contact. McCurkin also helps out number 76. Here you see Miami. You know, trying to reestablish the running game, and you got Larry Jones going right up the middle. They've had success all day there, and he just barrels over a Jeff Coat and come close to picking up the first down. And you know Miami looked like they want to go for it on fourth. By the way, that was the same play that Jones broke for the 70-yarder against West Virginia. Not much than just a little quick opener over the right-hand side as they'll bring the chains out. It appears from where the chains were marked, it's going to be about a half a yard short. And as they stretch it down, you can see it is about the length of the football is all. So Miami faced with his fourth down play, and Gino Toretta will bring out uh, Terrell Green, the center, and they will go for it. Green had already gone out, anticipating that Tom Patterson, the deep snapper, was coming in. Not the case, and Temple also runs several of their defenders back in as Gino Toretta will bring his ball up and will come out of, looked like he was heading for the shotgun. Now he'll bow under Green. Fourth down and inches here for Miami. Give it off to the sideline, and Jones has got the first down and then some as he barges his way out near midfield. Well, it's just like kind of loading up a gun and firing both barrels one way or the other before Domes can make the stop for Temple. Here you see a good job of blocking at the point of attack by the entire Miami offensive line on that left side, uh, Kirk Heide and uh, Bell, and they just do a good job of walling everybody off so that Jones was able to get... Uh, Four yards for the first down. Larry Jones, most valuable player of the Orange Bowl last year in the big win over Nebraska. Number 23, one of the four backs they use with Bennett, McGuire, and we have not seen the heralded freshman, Donnell Ferguson, but it is just a matter of time, I'm sure. Well, I think uh, get going into the fourth quarter, depending on uh, what happens, we know that we'll see him in the fourth quarter, but uh, possibly in the third quarter, we'll see Donnell and uh, quite a few of the other reserves. By the way, there's a good look at uh, a Barrow who you may recall was uh, slightly injured in the early part of the ball game, and he's just trying to stretch himself out because he knows he'll be called on here shortly on this defensive unit for Miami because the offense starting to work, but a good defensive play. And McPherson, all six foot three, two seventy five, reached up and batted that one out of the air. A homegrown product from Philadelphia, thirty four tackles, and gets a knock away on the pass there as Toretta was trying to throw it to the near sideline. Right, Miami tried to come back and go to uh, Larry Jones here. They tried to play earlier at the ball game where there was a miscommunication between the uh, fullback and the quarterback, so they came back to it, but McClurkin did a good job of getting his hands up, batting it down. Loretta checking off at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 yards to go. Shy of midfield goes to Jones. Jones with a little stutter step will gain about three yards. By the way, that 70-yarder he had against West Virginia last year or excuse me, last week we indicated was the uh, the longest since an 80-yard romp by O.J. Anderson against Florida State back in the 1978 season. So it's been a long time coming to get a long run, and Jones was the man that broke it. Downing and McCurkin were the man that made the stop on Jones inside for Temple, bringing up this third down and seven yards to go. Third down conversions, only a third so far, two of six for Miami, and the shotgun Toretta. A little more time to throw with that. It broke down, but he gets the completion, and he's going to throw it complete to Coleman Bell, top receiver for the Canes, having made 35 coming to the game. 
And he has a couple of words with Daryl Nelson, number 37, the man that brought him down, the rover back. Here you see Coben Bell. He, he's just a great athlete. Here he goes up, hangs up there, and catches the ball in his hands. And that's what you like to see with your receivers, catching the ball in your hand, not trying to bar to catch it. But there he had to go up and come down with it. Good job by uh, Coben Bell. Well, he's caught at least one pass now in 18 consecutive games. 114 yards versus West Virginia 117 against Virginia Tech by the way was his career high so Coleman Bell putting some good numbers up here's Jones with that little player out of the backfield he'll be wrestled out of bounds Bogani will make the stop John from Phoenix Arizona again a transfer from Glendale Community College using the junior college route to try to bolster up the owls for coach Jerry Byrne while Dennis Erickson has just taken this freshman using the red shirts very very well and very wisely has got himself a very deep football team right now. Marm has done a tremendous job over the years of red shirting their incoming freshmen and, and getting them the opportunity to learn what college is all about before they have to concentrate on playing football. That's when you consider Ferguson, who has been playing uh, uh, behind uh, the other people and playing in his first year. They, of course, knew he was good. Here's Lamar Thomas on the run for a Toretta pass, and they had thrown it up the far sideline, trying to beat over there at Glasper, but uh, just too much out of his range. No, he had him beat on that one. He had a couple steps on him, and Gino just rushed it a little bit there and didn't put any air on it. Usually you see Gino hanging high and let his receivers go get it, and this one he tried to line it in. You know, he knew he had the six, and he just put a little too much zip on it instead of hanging it. Pat, let me finish my comment on Coleman Bell for a moment. He has a three plus 100-yard gains this season, the first time since All-American Willie Smith did that back in 1984. So Coleman Bell making a little notch in his gun here as top receiver over the middle. They throw to Horace Copeland, speaking of great receivers. And Copeland's going to catch it, but now it's going to bring up a fourth down and short yardage play. They'll need three to the Canes. The free spirit Roman Hale makes the stop out of Westchester, Pennsylvania, number 46. A good one. 70 tackles coming in, and Dennis Erickson has waved it on. They're going to go for another fourth down play. Well... You know, they've uh, gotten a lot, a lot of work with the field goal already, so this is the time to, to work on their offense. Uh, they're very comfortably ahead, so why not? Paul Snyder, the forgotten punter for the Hurricanes, has not had to tow one up. He has held on extra points and uh, field goals as Jones will get just enough for the first down and looks like when he elongated himself over the 25, down to about the 24, that may have been just enough for the stretch to get the first down for Miami. That shows a lot of confidence in that Miami offensive line. It's uh, fourth, and, fourth and three, fourth and four, and Miami is known for throwing the football, but here you see they run Larry Jones off the right tackle with uh, Etheridge doing the blocking, and he, he leans out for the first down. John Stone, just a freshman, watching some early tapes of the Temple ball games. He had a tendency to hit everybody late and got several personal foul penalties early. But once he gets himself in gear, he's going to be a good one for Temple. Here's Toretta over the middle, throwing intended for Chris Jones, makes a, excuse me, throwing for Spencer. And Darrell Spencer makes a diving catch down at the five-yard line. And the ruthless posse has him set up with a first and goal to go at the five after a 19-yard pass from Toretta. Excellent throw and catch by Gino Toretta and Darrell Spencer. Here you see Toretta goes back, and Spencer's not really that much uncovered, and he throws it low where only Spencer can come up with the catch. Good catch by Spencer. Great throw by Toretta. Spencer again, trouble with a bad knee coming to the season, but has now worked himself into full condition and just in time. Syracuse, San Diego State, the last two games of the season on the road for the Canes. Toretta going to jump ball. The Copeland, does he have it? No, he says he's trapped it. Copeland, oh my, a backflip in the end zone, but he didn't get the touchdown. I wonder what he'll do if he scores a touchdown. And he ran right out of his shoe. I want to tell you, that is an athletic move. Oh, my. Well, you know what the great part about that was Copeland thought he had the touchdown. He did the, uh, the uh, backflip, and Crispina said, back at you, and he did a back, he did a backflip. Let's go back and look at a play. Here you see Toretta goes back, throws it, lobs it up for Copeland. Copeland goes down. He makes a diving uh, catch as he feels, so he gets up, and he does this double flip. Here we go. Boom. we got a flip by Copeland. Now, let's see Crispina. We missed it. But then Crispina said back at you, and he did a flip. Well, Gino Toretta coming to the line of scrimmage with a second down. You there just we saw go. It. There you go. Coming out of the corner of your screen, you see Crispina say, you haven't done anything I can't do, big guy. <laughs> it's like Barnum and Bailey Circus going on here, folks. Right now, it's a 27-0 score. 
with a second down and goal to go. Let's pause for a moment with our score 27 to nothing. We'll be right back after this from Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. It's the right beer now. He came up with the touchdown catch there from that angle, and here you see him. Does the backflip, little acrobatics. I give him a 9.8 for that. Wait a minute. And then Crispina says, no, you haven't done it any better than I can, but, you know, he didn't come straight as a to attention. So yeah. that's like a 9-4. Yeah. No I still give Copeland the victory. No contest. No contest. Looked like Copeland made the catch, though. Got his hands on the ground, but the referee right on top of it said no. Second down goal to go at the six-yard line. Beretta again all changing the signal at the line of scrimmage. He's got Larry Jones behind him. He's going to give it to LJ, and he cuts to the right side. He'll gain a couple of yards inside the four. They may give him down to the three-yard line. But it'll bring up a third down and goal to go. Nelson, the rover, was right up on the line of scrimmage for Temple to make that stop, number 37. Also coming in was Chris Pina. Sam, one of the things that's so impressive about Gino Toretta is that you see him checking off at the line of scrimmage, but he checks the runs. He, he, try, he tries to get his team in the best possible play for them to have success. He's not always checking to a pass. You know, most quarterbacks, when you see him check off, it's going to be a throw. Jones already with six carries for 43 yards. Has some more running help in there as Donnell Bennett has checked in to block for him now. And Gino Toretta sees something he doesn't like on a third down play. No, Temple saw something they didn't like, and they take the timeout. So a defensive timeout has been taken here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. 9.15 left to play in the third period. The Canes threatening to score again against the Owls, who are trying to hold off their ninth loss of the year against a single victory so far this year. The Miami Hurricanes, who have scored in 14 consecutive quarters, try to add another score here in this third period, leading 27 to nothing. And here's Toretta back to throw in the end zone. He's got a touchdown, Kirk Kelly. Kevin Kirk Kite makes his second career touchdown catch. He got one early this year against Florida A&M and now makes his second. The fifth-year senior, 6'4", 230, out of Jacksonville Bowles High School. And Toretta has now thrown his 46th touchdown pass, two away from tying a school record of Testaverde and Walsh. Excellent play call here, getting Toretta outside of the pocket by running a little uh, roll to his left and then Kirk Kite coming wide open with no one around him. Here's the point after try. And Dane Pruitt is perfect there as he puts it through, and the numbers continue to add up. 34 0 now for the Hurricanes enjoying their homecoming 93, and they're still scuffling down on the field after the point after. Both ball clubs, and now a flag finally goes down, and I mean a lot of them. We'll see if this is going to be offsetting as we had a personal foul called on both teams a moment ago. That, by the way, is Tom Patterson, the deep snapper, number 57. And you saw Dennis Erickson was right out there uh, talking to him very quickly. As Patterson was right in the middle of that uh, action along with McClurkin. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Joe? Thank you guys very much. I have another very special guest with me. Yes, the number one pick, number one sign pick for the Florida Marlins, Charles Johnson. Charles, congratulations. Thank you. You uh, are now in a, well, the first signee, the number one pick for the Florida Marlins. You've got to be excited about your chances of playing in an organization close to home. Oh, yes. Um, I live two hours away from Joe Robbins Stadium, and um, my chances of playing are very, uh, very great. Um, i got to go on and go in and play the best I possibly can and work hard. And I can't control the results, but I can't work hard. It took a long time to get the contract. There was talk that you may be coming back. Was there any question in your mind that you'd sign? Oh, um, I knew for sure I was going back to school because um, during the summer, the Marlins didn't make a real big effort to sign me, but they came on later um, um, last week to, uh, to make a great effort to sign me, and um, I accepted the offer. Now, you two, you tell me, are a great Hurricane football fan. Haven't missed any home games. I haven't missed not one home game. I come here every game. Um, I support all my friends. I have a lot of guys there I came to school with um, my freshman year, and um, they're now seniors now, and a lot of them are leaving. I'm, I'm supporting. There's one right there, my homeboy, there Ryan McNeil. Um, I support him all the time. Um, he's a great guy. Okay, well, thank you very much. I know the Sunshine Network's very excited about watching you play at the Florida Marlins. Thank you. Okay, back up to you guys. Thank you very much. And again, the catcher on that uh, Olympic uh, team that went over. We'd like to remind you, of course, the Florida Marlins will be coming up. Expansion special on Tuesday, November the 17th. Is quite obviously the numbers will start to fly on who will be playing for the first Marlin. Again, live at 2 p.m. Check your local listings for all of the information on the Marlins. 
Here we get another play, the play action pass, rolling Toretta out to his left, and here he hits Kevin Kirkati wide open with no one around him. So the Canes come up with it. You saw Kevin trying to get his headgear off. That, of course, is a patent of Lamar Thomas. When he makes the uh, touchdown, he gets that lid off. And now with a step off on the personal foul against Temple, it is going to be a kickoff at the 50-yard line. So the uh, personal foul did go against the Temple Owls as Patterson was in the middle of it. But again, McClurkin must have been the man that uh, committed the foul as they kick off by Pruitt. And someone may have a souvenir just short of going into the end zone. And out. So it'll be Temple's ball, first down and 10. They'll have it at their own 20-yard line. And trailing now 34-0. Still 9-10 to go in this third period of the ball game from the Orange Bowl. And yes, sir, they are number one. Five minutes and 50 seconds. A good, long, sustained drive there. Kirk Kite with a three-yard reception again from Gino Toretta. 46 touchdown passes now as a Kane quarterback. Getting ready to check in. This may be, is it Linhart? It is. It is Luke Linhart, once again, number 14, the quarterback for Temple. He started the ball game, and Palisac, of course, had gone most of the way since early in the first period. And off straight ahead as Temple just tries to wedge out some yards up the middle. This is a real difficult situation for, for the Temple Isles because you know, you're looking at them possibly losing coach losing their head coach uh, this year and you want to build and you're getting blown away here and you say well we should get some positive out of this game let's work on some things but in the process it's hard to do that being that the coach might not be there next year and you got Frank Costas over there warming up on the sideline so we might have seen the last of Gino Toretta today. Well, by the way, he'll be very excited. He is a Philadelphia product. Here's a pass intended for Cook. Knocked away as Bass and Smith were right there on top of him. Excuse me, that's going to be Greer. Number 29, Casey Greer, was right on top. A young man from Memphis Hamilton High School, a fifth-year senior. And again, Smith, as I indicated. But again, back to uh, Frank Costa. He is a young man that uh, prepped at St. Joe's Prep in Philadelphia, so he will look forward to playing against the Temple Owls if indeed he gets in there. All right. Here, here we see uh, the ball being dropped. Linhard made a good throw in there, and the tight end just dropped the ball. Cook, uh, you know, they've got to help the quarterback out. You've got four freshman quarterbacks that are struggling, and they need help. So their receivers, whether it's the quarterback, the defense, I mean, the, uh, the, the backs or the wide receivers, they've got to come up and make some plays for them. Washington and Longhorn, their two best receivers to the near sideline. They were throwing for Washington, covered by Armstead. Out of his reach and out of bounds will bring up a third down and they'll need about, uh, excuse me, fourth down and they'll need six here for the Temple Owls. will have to kick the ball and they will be kicking into now what is turned in to a little bit more of a, a northeasterly breeze coming out of the open east end of the Orange Bowl. It now is starting to quarter back to the north, but he will be kicking in and win and this will hold up for Kevin Williams. Let's see if Miami does a good job of holding the the offensive line there at the line of scrimmage, giving Kevin a chance to catch the ball and get headed up field a little bit better. Pretty good containment that time. Barrow's back there to block, but Williams is not going to get a chance at the ball. Takes a good tempo bounce, and it'll be whistled dead at the 43-yard line. So the Miami Hurricanes will take over first and 10, and they'll have the ball after a 33-yard punt by John Shea. And it will be Frank Costa will be the quarterback of note. He is a sophomore, third-year man. 21 uh, completions on 36 passes. A good look at Frank. 214 pounds, 6'4", kind of that prototype that they tried to project here around the University of Miami. And Frank is just licking his lips and waiting in the wing because he knows Toretta is through after this year. The job is his, uh, as he said at this point for next year. But uh, you know, you've got a couple of young guys that's behind him that's saying that it's not going to be that easy. Steve Walker's younger brother will make be another one along with Ryan Collins. And off to the outside as again the Canes try to use a little bit of the running game to set up the passing game of Costa. Try to get him into the game early here on his first snap and McGuire's back in there. A little bit of the sure-handed senior to help him out with the handoffs. Scott Holland makes the stop number 93 for Temple. But right, you, you want the, the, the sophomore quarterback to come in and have some success. You don't want to put him in the fire even though you're playing a team that uh, you're beating uh, pretty badly, but you still want to build Frank Costa's confidence, not just for today, but for the future. How many times have you seen Gino Toretta do this? He's taken off the wraps. He's through for the day with seven and a half left to play in the third period. A snap from center is fumble. Costa has to fall on it himself, and 
Well, just as you talked about, a little bit nervous there by Frank Costa trying to make things happen too quickly. Well, he just pulled out there a little early. You know, the especially on a running play when you're running wide, you have a tendency to come out. There you see him come out instead of hanging in there, and the ball goes between his hands. Where if he had stayed in there a little bit longer and received the snap, then he's able to sprint out and give the ball to the back going wide. Number 54, Lance Johnstone had a shot at that fumble. Had it been a little bit further in front of him. On third down conversions, only four of nine this afternoon for Miami, and they've got a third down, and they need a little over six yards. Costa checking off as he brings McGuire right up to the line of scrimmage. And he throws. It's complete to Harris, but he's going to be shy of a first down. Maybe. It depends on the spot. It'll be very, very close, and they may have to bring the chains, the length, their uh, width of the field. Coles made the stop for Temple after the catch by Harris. That could be a pretty good uh, duo. A sophomore, Jonathan Harris, out of Houston, Fortis Brooks. And Costa, the sophomore from Philadelphia. He did stretch out far enough to get he the did. first down. They didn't have to measure. Good job of uh, stretching out for the first down, getting that extra yardage by Jonathan Harris. Costa, by the way, was the man that threw the first touchdown pass to Kevin Kirkkite in the Florida A&M game. And that's been his only career touchdown pass of this season for the Hurricanes for him as he's back to throw. Going over the middle, and Williams had a man pretty well latched onto him. Chris Pina had made some contact as the ball went whistling by Kevin Williams. Chris Pina's a fiery little guy, I tell you. Chris Pina is a, is a very talented guy that loves to hit. And there you have uh, Gino Toretta and his brother Jeff. Uh, and... Uh, Jeff was behind uh, Testaverde, right? Right, right. Yeah. He also played uh, here at the UM, and uh, it's the Toretta family. Well, you saw the numbers of Gino and the Heisman Trophy. He's got to consider that with the score, 34 to nothing, how much longer would you leave him in? Dennis Erickson said, that's long enough. Let the youngsters get some time, and they do. Here's the snap out of the shotgun over Costa's head. Let's see if he can recover. He's throwing. It's going to be incomplete. He was throwing the near sideline to McGuire, and he gets buried back up the field. He made a good job to even get to the ball and throw it incomplete. Yeah, Costa showed a lot of poise there, uh, Sam. He, he did a good job of taking his time, going back, not panicking, picking the football up, and then just throwing it out of bounds to save the sack. They bring the ball back, and the line of scrimmage is still at third down and ten, and whoops. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if he's gotten as much work as Gino at, at the, the shotgun, but, you know, he's got to watch the football into his hands the same as a receiver, and, you know, that's one that he should have caught. Now he goes up under green and changes the play as he brings McGuire tight in the slot to the left side. He's throwing to Lamar Thomas. He's got it at the 20. Side steps him in at the 15 and down to the seven yard line. What a beautiful play by Lamar Thomas. There's that patented Lamar Thomas. Get that lid off and show your face. Nice pass after a 38 yard pass and run by Lamar Thomas from Costa. Real good pass by Costa here. He does a good job of getting it in there and he's got this thing on a string. It's on a line. Lamar does a good job catching the ball and trying to run after the catch where, you know, he's at eight touchdowns for the year and he needs one more to get in fast company with uh, Eddie Brown and Michael Irvin, the only other receivers to ever score nine touchdowns in the season. Angelo was the last man that could have stopped Gino Toretta, excuse me, uh, Thomas before making the touchdown run as Costa gives off to McGuire, cuts back. McGuire already the all-time touchdown scorer for running the football with 33. And cuts it down to near the five-yard line, make it the five-and-a-half. Hale and Bagliani make the stop for Temple. Thomas taking a rest on the sideline. He's getting a word of advice, I know, from Saeed Tucker, who made his first career touchdown. He said, now, I would have cut back the other side. <laughs> Take a look at the numbers on Lamar Thomas. That's it. Get the lid off. That's oh, oh, There it is. 114 yards on only four catches today. Well, he's coming Thank up big much. today. Uh, he's uh, coming off a big game last week, and you know, he's peaking right at the right time. We've got uh, Syracuse next week, and you know the, the entire offensive football team have to be ready to play to go up there and beat Syracuse at the uh, Carrier Dome. Flag is down as McGuire takes out half the press corps on the near sideline as Crispino goes out of bounds. As he knocks him down on that side, along with Angelo, who's had a very busy afternoon, number 20 and number 2. There's a penalty against Miami on the flags. Dennis Erickson, kind of one of those trying times. You're ahead 34 to nothing. You want to get the youngsters in the ball game. 
Uh, you first of all do not want to get anybody hurt. They've already lost another one of their down defensive linemen in uh, uh, Kenny Lopez with an ankle injury. However, Patrick Riley, who has a separated shoulder, could be ready for Syracuse next week. But again, you don't want to get in this ball game where you start getting people taking some cheap shots and quite obviously get some people hurt for the Syracuse game next week. Well, that's something you always think about as a head coach. But, you know, Coach Erickson is also showing a lot, of, a lot of class today to his seniors. You know, the seniors have been here for four, year, four years, five years, whatever. And, you know, they're giving it their all and they're playing their last game possibly here in the Orange Bowl. So he's letting them play a little bit longer. Five yard mark off against Miami will bring up a second down and they are at their own 15 yard line with goal to go. Costa standing in there. He throws complete to Copeland to the touchdown. And he's got it for Miami. Costa with his second career touchdown pass, and Copeland does the dirty work as he takes it in. 15 yard pass and run, and Copeland scores for Miami. They go up with a score of 40 to nothing. Here you see uh, isolation, and you got Jonathan Harris coming uh, and with uh, Copeland coming off his little pick. And then he does a good job of shaking the tackle there and then really showing that world-class speed diving into the end zone. Good run after the catch by Horace Copeland. Only his second touchdown of the season, despite the fact that he's made great receptions, 32 all year long. Pruitt will tack on the extra point for Miami, leading by the score of 41 to nothing with 4.33 left to play. As a good look at Horace Copeland, the near sideline, the fourth year senior out of Orlando at Evans High School. And a good one as he makes the reception from Costa. Well, Miami again in command in the third. Sam Smith along with Nat Moore and Joe Rose here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Another big day for the Canes, now leading 41 to nothing, and Costa in control. Here you see Costa going to Copeland, a little double clutch, but then you see Copeland does a good job, once again, of spotting that end zone and getting in there. 58 yards into eight plays, 332 engineered by, again, the sophomore Frank Costa. 15-yard reception by Copeland, his second touchdown of the season. And Pruitt again will get a toe into it, and again they kick to this man, Lawhorn, averaging 33 yards per return, but he has not had that kind of afternoon yet. And he's knocked off his feet, and that's going to be Richardson, the first man to reach him number 19, and knocks him down after a 14-yard return. So the numbers are just about in half for the punt returner and kickoff man. Lawhorn, who has just failed to get untracked, and he hasn't been able to catch the ball either, which is a real key against Temple today. Toretta and company, pretty much relaxed. Costa's still kind of anxious to get things going. Number 11, you see him there. And he's kind of working on that shotgun snap here. But he, he had trouble handling the first one, and you know the high snap is what you always worry about as a uh, coach when you put the shotgun in. And he just didn't do a good job of handling that first snap. By the way, they may be working with Alan Simonette, who will be the center when they come back out on offense. Hand off again, and there's that man that did so well early in the ball game. That is Cabrera, the senior co-captain here for the Temple Owls, and he gets it out to around the 29-yard line. Near 30-yard line is Mark Caesar still playing one of the down linemen. By the way, number 94 has been playing a lot this afternoon with Riley and now Lopez out of there, and that is Dwayne Johnson. Johnson, a 6'5 sophomore from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, as you see Walsh, the younger brother of Steve Walsh, who played here and is tied with Testaverde with 48 career touchdown passes, but Toretta is looming with 46 right behind both. Cabrera carrying people with him. Short of the first down, it looks like by about a half a yard or so, but near the final stake, and the first team defense is staying in there. A lot of pressure on Walsh as he comes from Minneapolis, Minnesota, comes in here following the footsteps of his uh, big brother, but has a lot of confidence in his game, and so do the uh, Hurricanes and him. Has a lot of confidence, and the, and the coaching staff really like his ability. You know, he's a very talented kid that they want to bring along slowly, but he'll be in that race for next year's starting quarterback once Coretta leaves. Third down and one yard needed here for the Owls. Back to throw. Lenhart running for his life and throws well over the head, and the intended receiver is Washington. That'll bring up a fourth down in punt time. Once again here for the Owls of Temple. The defensive coaches for the... Hurricanes have done such a great job. Defensive coordinator and secondary coach, Sonny Lubick, 
Ed Orgeron, the defensive line coach, Tommy Tuberville with the linebackers. What a job he's done. And Randy Shannon, a former linebacker himself here with the Canes, assistant defensive line and linebacker coach. Greg Mark, along with Eric Price, the graduate assistants on that defensive side, and they've all done yeoman work this year. And we salute them for the work that we've enjoyed on Sunshine. Here's going to be the fake, and this is something they used against Virginia Tech as they snap it to the short man, and that is Hale, number 46. They tried this play as he lines up as the blocker for the punter, and they snap it right to him, and you see it. It's an explosive play for the Temple Owls. And there's that quick snap, and he's off to the races. Nobody saw him coming. All right, here, here you see the Miami defense just, I mean, special team just went to sleep. You know, you got fourth and inches. The team's losing 41 to nothing. You've got to sit there and, and make sure the snap and be ready to play defense if they are faking it. There they were not. 19 yards on that uh, carry by Hale. And it's first down for Temple as they have reached the 49 in Miami territory. They have been to the 15 twice this afternoon, but have failed to score. And off again, Cabrera, line of scrimmage. That's it. No more. They've used that running game to try to set up a little bit. They're not looking as much to the little short dump in passes. Remember that? They set up the long pass that they hit with Fredericks the one time when they set up the, the, the short dump ins, but they're not doing that anymore. Well, where they're not able to get the ball to the tight end because the linebackers are locking in on the tight ends a little bit more, so they've tried to come back with uh, Cabrera running the ball up the middle, and they've had a lot of success with that, but you know, the, they're not winning the battle of the line of scrimmage consistently to be able to run the football effectively. Second down in the same 10 yards to go with no gain from Cabrera. Leonard throwing over the middle, and it is going to be incomplete as the intended receiver down there came up with a catch, but he just could not uh, come up with it before it touched the turf. And number 19 is Martin Baxter. Baxter, by the way, is also a quarterback of note. Here's a reminder that the National Hockey League is right here on Sunshine. How about the Lightning of Tampa Bay against the Blues of St. Louis? Saturday, November 21st, live beginning at 8 p.m. with a pregame. Check your local listings as Tampa Bay has moved to the top of their division in the National Hockey League. Lightning really surprising a lot of folks over in the Tampa Bay area. One of eight on conversions spurt down by the Temple Owls as a timeout has been called and Young ladies enjoying a very special afternoon. A homecoming, I know, at, uh, at Florida was always a special time as well. It's always fun to go back home, I know. Well, it's always a great opportunity, not only for the students, but, you know, for all of the alumnus and fans that get a chance to come back and, and, and see a lot of friends. And, and usually you try and schedule a game that uh, you hope to have some fun. And, uh, you know, they've got that today. And, and playing Tempo, you know, Tempo has had a tough year all year, and it was just a credit that they're coming in here and, and, and have tried to, to do the best they could to compete against the number one team in the country. So, you know, when you start talking homecoming, all of the fans look forward to that day when they all get to come back and visit the people that they went to school with. Well, as Jerry Burt visits with Lenard across the way, let me read you some names of those that are departing for their final home game. Armstead, Toretta, Snyder, Bell, Greer, McGuire, Spencer, Thomas, Smith, McNeil, Barrow, Eberst, also Etheridge, Cristobal, London, Vickers, Kirk Kite, Copeland, and Caesar. Those are the 19 seniors, 16 of which are starters with the punter Snyder. 17 very key people, and for that matter, 19 all very integral parts for this Miami Hurricanes number one team. And as you say, you, you have to wonder how will they replace them? But then when you look at the talent that the University of Miami has, you know, they've been replacing them year after year for a long time. And doing it very nicely, thank you. Dennis Erickson, two of the three years prior to this year, he won a national title. He may have another one as there is Barrow chasing down Leonard and forced him to throw an errant pass, and it was almost picked off by the other linebacker, Armstead, as he was chasing down the intended receiver. Well, I tell you what, he is tenacious when he gets after the quarterback. Right. Here you see Michael Barrow coming through, and, you know, Lenhart does just a good job of getting the ball off, avoiding the sack, but Michael Barrow just has unbelievable ability at timing the blitz. I mean, he hits the hole right as the ball is being snapped, and, and it, you know, do not give the guard or the center a chance to block on him. You can bet somebody's going to hit number 46 Hale this time on this punt or near 
punt. You may recall that he ran for 19 yards on the fake a moment ago, and that is he blocking for Shea, the punter, who will get it away to Williams. A wobbly kick to the near sideline and goes out of bounds. It'll depend on how far they walk it up. And it's going to be just inside the 30. They'll spot it down at the 28-yard line, and that's where it'll be the Hurricanes football first and 10, and Shea is not happy about that punt, I know. Well, he's not happy, and uh, Kevin Williams is not happy because he yeah. wants to make something happen, and he's, he's, he now has his team holding people up, and then the kicker won't cooperate, won't kick it to him. So, you know, it's a tough situation for Kevin Williams, who is really trying to break out of a slump. You know, everybody came in with high expectations with the great punt returns of last year, and this year he just haven't been able to get off track. And once again, the kicker kicks the ball out of bounds. By the way, we're going to see a lot of new French linemen, including number 73. We'll get a shot at him. 6'7", 320-pound Frenchman. Ricky Perry will be playing the right tackle spot. And they say he's going to be a good one. Here's the handoff, and it goes to Ferguson, the freshman. There is a flag behind the play, however, as Costa handing off. And this is the future of the Canes, certainly. Sophomore quarterback, freshman running back. But again, a penalty, and more than likely, it appears, will go against the Canes. Coles is the man that ran Ferguson finally out of bounds and shows some great speed when he gets on the outside. Well, he is their speed back, and he has the ability to not only run inside, but to, to get outside, turn the corner, and, and maybe go the distance. John Smith has been our referee, indicates a hold on the Miami Hurricanes. By the way, we notice number 77. Lebowski is in there. Simonette is the center, number 66. Padroni, number 69, is one of the guards. And again, Perry is one of the tackles. We'll check one of the inside guards a moment ago. Well, the streak. Canes have scored 40 or more points 20 times in winning 50 consecutive football games. Here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, they're going for number 51. And the, the dots are silent right now. They have been punctuation marks on some big scores this afternoon with a 41 to nothing lead. There's Perry, number 73. You see how big this guy is. He'll protect for Costa on the shotgun. A little better snap this time. Pressure's on. The screen set up for Ferguson. Ferguson loses the ball as he's knocked out of bounds. And after the big step off against Miami, they're just going to get it back to a 13 yards needed for the first down again after Ferguson is banged out of bounds. Joe Rose is standing by downstairs. Joe? Well, for a lot of seniors, you can see over here on the sideline, a lot of the seniors are taking their pads off. They're done for the day. They're waving the crowd. Lamar Thomas, a lot of the guys having a good time, but uh, this will be it for 19 seniors unless we see the Orange Bowl uh, or the Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl. Well, they've had themselves quite an afternoon of football again, as expected against the Temple Owls, coming in at only one and eight. Costa, a little delay. Fake there, comes to the outside for Kite. Boy, he wanted to look that one in, but just absolutely took his eyes off of it and loses a good reception. It would have been short of the first down, but Nat, he had some running room that could have gotten the first down for him. He had a lot of running room, and uh, you know the, the thing is, he just didn't come down with the catch, but he, he did keep his eyes on the football, where most times when you drop the football, you take your eyes off. Looked like he jumped a little too soon, and then on the way down, was not able to just hang there and make the reception. Well, you saw a moment ago one of the Temple Owls momentarily shake it up across the way. We'll check on it here in just a moment. That is a Johnstone, number 54. He was momentarily shaken up. But I would like to remind you that the NBA basketball and Sunshine are hand-in-hand -hand again this year. How about the magic with the Shack attack? They host the Warriors of Golden State Thursday, November the 19th, live, beginning at 7 p.m. with our pregame. Game will not be shown in some areas of South Florida, so please check your local listings for... The Magic against the Warriors. And if you have not seen Shaquille O'Neal, seven feet over 300 pounds running like a small forward, you are in for quite a treat. He is a super, super athlete. Fifth in scoring in the league. Number one in rebounding, averaging over 16. And number five in the league in shots uh, blocked. So he is truly making an impact already. But just think, mm. the scary part is he's only going to get better. That's right. <laughs> when he learns the game, right? I'll tell you what, he is one heck of a basketball player. Jerry Burnt, you see him on the sideline. Jerry, of course, is toiling in his fourth year for the Temple Owls. He had a very successful run at the University of Pennsylvania from 81 to 85. Five years there. As a matter of fact, in 84, became the first ever Pennsylvania undefeated team in the Ivy League. He won four straight titles there. Really kind of set that up when he was an assistant at Dartmouth, where they, too, won four straight Ivy League championships. But he's had rough roads, not only at Rice, where he was the athletic director and head coach, winning only six games, but now winning only 11 in his four years so far with the Temple Owls. 
Shotgun for Costa on this third down play. Over the middle. He's got uh, Chris Jones, but uh, Chris cannot hang on to it. A collision by the tip allows, but Jones also had a pass that was very catchable, and that would have been the first down for Miami, but it's not. And guess what? Paul Schneider will be the man that has not been used all day long to punt the ball anyway. We'll have to come on. Well, Paul's saying thank you. I'm a senior. <laughs> I want to get some of this action, and I'm finally going to get a chance to punt. But that was a catchable ball that, uh, you know, uh, Costas has had two balls that would have gotten him the first down that was dropped. You know, so he's four for eight, but two of those were not his fault. Good throws, and uh, they just didn't come down with the ball for it. One of the Temple Owls has been shaken up. You saw the collision behind the ball after that catch was made. I think that's Jeff Coles to stand there. It is. Jeff Coles, a freshman from Philadelphia, 5'11", 185. He and Tony Angelo, number 20, have had busy days at that free safety spot. And there you get a good look at Paul Schneider. Schneider's averaging 39.8 yards so far in his 48 kicks so far. That is slightly above his 38.40 at last year's longest. Came in the opening game of the season, 55 against the Hawkeyes of Iowa. He'll have a slight breeze, which has died a little bit, believe it or not. Contrary to what my hair might look like when we get on top of this building again. And here's the kick by Snyder. <laughs> he may punt only once today, but he has boomed the beauty. And it is Baxter back to try to do the returns, and a flag is down. Baxter has had some injury problems. He started the year kind of alternating at one of the quarterback spots and returning punts. But he pulled up with some injuries and has been sidelined. Marcus Carey, number 48, you see there, making the stop after a 49-yard kick with a 7-yard return. And it's holding against Temple as if they needed any more problems. <laughs> 36 seconds to go before the end of the third period. And you see Michael Barry and Barrow and his number one uh, defense still in there. Well, I think Coach uh, Erickson agreed to let the seniors on defense play at least three quarters, uh, being that this is their last home game. And, you know, on that defensive football team, you've got so many local uh, guys here that uh, it's an opportunity for their family and friends to see them play their last game here at home. Two touchdown passes here in this third period. Toretta to Kirk Kite and Costa to Copeland have accounted for the scoring here in this third period of the ball game. Again, Temple has yet to get off the goose egg. They threatened a couple of times, but the defense indeed did throw them back. Well, back in to handle the quarterbacking chores is Palachek. Palachek relieved uh, Linhart, who was the starter. Palachek had a pretty good run there for a while as he throws incomplete on the near side to Fredericks. Dexter Sigler had the end zone in sight again as he made a try for the intercept. Once again, the little pass that's a little bit low, and the receiver almost bats it up and gives Sigler a chance to come up with another deflected ball for six. Well, the three linebackers are going out. Eberst, along with Marley, and also coming in in there is uh, Robert Bass. So number two, 49 and 61, replace one, 56 and 45. That, of course, Armstead, Barrow and Smith, the legend so far at linebacker here for Miami this year. Palachek, the quarterback, with a second and 10 for the Owls, 32 seconds before the end of the third period with a 41-0 lead by Miami. And here is Jenkins carrying for probably only about the third time he's carried the ball today, running into Marley. Marley knocking him off his feet after a gain of roughly about three yards. It'll bring up a third down and seven yards needed here for the Owls. Sam, you have to admire a guy like Rohan Marley. You know, he comes from uh, a very wealthy family, and, you know, he's 5'8", 200 pounds, and, you know, he just wanted to get out there and mix it up. His dad was one of the great reggae singers of all time, and, yeah. you know, he had an opportunity to go into the business, and he says, I don't sing. I play football. And I sting. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. And the clock winds down, and that's the end of three here at the Orange Bowl on homecoming afternoon for the Hurricanes of Miami. And the number one uh, ranked team in college football is showing their muscle, leading 41 to nothing. We start the final 15 minutes of our ball game this afternoon. Sam Smith, Nat Moore, and Joe Rose at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Canes leading the Temple Owls in Big East play with a score of 41 to nothing. Tuning up for their big showdown coming up next week when they'll go to Syracuse against the Orangemen. Fredericks in motion for Temple. Third down. They need seven. Palachek back to throw. He's got a man, and it's complete. That's Tom Richards, the tight end. A senior from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, makes the catch. 
And it's going to be shy of a first down. It'll bring up a fourth and short yard. It's needed here by the Owls. Ebers, the linebacker, makes the stop. Got into traffic, and also you see Bass, Robert Bass, number uh, 49, also there. Well, they've given up 20 points as the second team defense in two of the last two ball games in the fourth quarter. Let's see what they do today, Nat. Well, they're, you know, they've they've been on the heat because of that, so I, I expect them to play well today, and you know, we'll see whether Rohan Marley can be that leader on defense to get them fired up. Fourth down and one, and the Owls are going for it here. And the handoff goes to Jenkins. He'll not make it as pass. Meets him in the hole. So the defense holds. By the way, Chad Wilson, number nine, has been shaken up for the Canes. He's laying at the 40-yard line after Robert Bass makes the stop and throws the Owls back on the fourth down and one play. Well, I think uh, we've got the first answer to the question. Is you see Bass here getting penetration right up the middle, you know, making the tackle and throwing the, the uh, fullback back, keeping from gaining the uh, first down. Well, let me correct that. I think that's going to be Terrace Harris, number six, rather than uh, Wilson. It is going to be Terrace Harris, number six, who was knocked off his feet back up field and is being helped off as Jerry Burnt just with his head duck saying it just hasn't been our afternoon again here today. Well, offensively for Miami, they'll be coming out with a lot of fresh faces as well. Frank Costa will still be the quarterback. At least we'll wait until they break the huddle and make sure here. As he said himself, quite an afternoon and uh, already trying to add some numbers here. He's already got a touchdown pass to Copeland and would love to get a second one here. Got some talented uh, receivers on the right. Instead, hands off to Ferguson. Danielle Ferguson broke all of the rushing records in Dade County. For those of you in the other parts of Florida and the country, Dade County very prolific in uh, getting some great rushing running backs. Here you see Ferguson just falling on uh, Lemelski and that whole bunch right there, right up front, right up the middle on that right side trying to reestablish the running game with that second unit. Crispino made the stop for Temple. It's a second down. They need only about two and a half, three yards. And off this time goes to Marucci. Jason powers his way to the 20. First down, Canes. Let's go downstairs to Joe Rose. Joe? Thank you guys very much. As this game continues on, it's now the Canes 41 and the Owls are struggling. But the real people putting on a, the whole show down here while the game gets boring is these cheerleaders. The Miami Hurricane cheerleaders have been putting a lot of work in and have been behind this team all year, and they do have a lot of fun. Well, and I'm sure there are some seniors there that, too, are going through their final home game, saving, of course, an appearance by the Canes in the Orange Bowl here in their final appearance on the 51st consecutive win in the Orange Bowl by Miami. And now they'll be only six shy of the record set by Alabama at 57. This is Ferguson. Down to the eight-yard line. Enough for another first down. He gains a dozen on the play. Well, Danielle Ferguson already with a couple of hundred yards, despite the fact he's been used sparingly. I tell you, he's a very mature running back to be just a, a freshman, a true freshman. Here you see him just, you know, ducking in there instead of worrying about trying to get outside. A true freshman, usually they're not mature enough. They want to get outside every time they carry the football. There you see him banging it up inside for a big game. Mike Hungerford, the reserve nose guard, number 97, made the stop finally for Temple. Ferguson out of there. And Marucci back in, so it'll be Ferguson and Marucci on this drive. See what they can do. Tellison goes split to the left side. Harris and Jones to the right. Marucci with a carry. Down to the three, to the two. Fights to the goal line short by a yard. Nice play. Had some blockers in front of him doing the job they needed to do as well to open up a hole. And it was... Uh, Madroni, Jason Madroni out of Philadelphia doing the job number 69. Right, you got Madroni, uh, Lamelski, you got Carlos Etheridge back in there because uh, Perry got hurt, and they're just doing a good job of reestablishing the line of scrimmage to be able to run the football. Tony Angelo was a man that prevented the touchdown along with Crispina for Temple, but it is second down and goal to go here for Miami. Costa, let's see if he dials in Ferguson for the touchdown. He's the lone running back. He pitches to him to the near sideline. Touchdown, Miami! Danielle Ferguson will step into the end zone for a touchdown, and a happy young man 
Again, it originally signed to go to Notre Dame, but elected to stay right here at home with the Canes. And he couldn't have been more delighted for a coaching staff to see this young man in his freshman year scoring the TD. Here you see the big number 65 there leading him in. That's uh, Robert Woodruff, a member of that second unit that uh, <laughs> is doing a good job. Well, an extra point, this will be number 39, and that's going to be Michael Swartz. Swartz has got a great big lid on there, too. Here's the kick up, and he has been practicing and gets it through and gets it in there. Well, just short of a half a century mark at 48. The Canes, 48 to nothing leaders over the Temple Owls. As homecoming starts to wind down here at the Orange Bowl, we still got 11.43 to go. Don't go away. Back on Sunshine in a moment. Well, just about everybody's getting into the act now. This 48 to nothing lead by the Miami Hurricanes over Temple, including Danielle Ferguson, first career touchdown for the Canes. First touchdown, and but we'll see many more of uh, this young man crossing the goal line. Good running, good blocking once again at the point of attack. Woodruss, along with Kirk Kite, you saw out in front of him there. Just over a couple of minutes to score from the one-yard line, finally by Ferguson to take it up to a 48 to nothing lead here by the Miami Hurricanes. Kicking off is going to be Scott Barnwell. Barnwell kicking deep to the 11-yard line. Temple is going to have one of their better runbacks of the afternoon. A flag, however, is down back up field. And now some more altercations starting to break out on the field as, again, the runback coming straight ahead. Jeff Coles took it out to nearly the 35-yard line, but again, a flag well back up field, and that should bring it back against Temple, it appears. Terry making the stop on the special teams for Miami. As you pointed out, Nat, uh, one of the things that we've talked about all afternoon for Jerry Burnt, the fact that indeed it's not official, but there is an indication he will not be back. These young men are down to the number one team, 48 to nothing. You're a long way from home. You can quit. And a lot of times when you give up an effort, that's when injuries start working. But credit to Temple, at least they're out there still trying to bang away a little bit and uh, a little frustrating. Well, it's got to be frustrating. You're losing the ball game 48 to zip, and uh, you're, you're worried about uh, your future as, a, as an athlete because the coaching staff that you've grown fond of, that you've worked with, might no longer be there next year, and you're playing the number one team in the country. It's hard to stay motivated and not quit, but uh, so far they seem to be still a little feisty. You've got some tempers flaring, but overall they're still playing. Uh, they're hanging in there, trying to play as tough as they can. We'll pick up some new faces on the defense for the Hurricanes, Bethel. Along with Johnson, a couple that we spotted as a handoff over the middle. And again, the Owls trying to keep it on the ground to keep it respective here. Let's go back down to Joe Rose, who's been busy today, Joe. Thank you, guys. You know, it's funny. We're sitting down here watching a lot of the seniors, the starters for this University of Miami football team, are watching their backups and saying, hey, guys, we got a shutout. Let's keep this thing going. <laughs> that was one thing. It was a subject of conversation all week long. Hey, fellas, 20 points against Virginia Tech, 20 points against West Virginia you gave up in the fourth quarter. What is going on here? Well, none of that today. Well, they've answered the, uh, the, 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 the question the first time they had a chance by holding them on fourth down, and offensively, the second team has also answered the question by going in for a touchdown. So, so far, the second team players are doing the job. Mack with his second straight carry will get enough for the first down. He needed only a yard. As the Canes have a 4-1 advantage almost in total yardage this afternoon, over 414 yards for the Canes. And a first down for Mack as he carries the ball well. He has been three, uh, one of three that they've used, Cabrera, along with Jenkins and Mack. And Cabrera and Mack have been very good. Yeah, here you see Mack doing a good job. He starts outside and he cuts back inside. And he just does a, a, a fairly decent job of keeping his feet moving, keeping his body lean forward so that uh, he falls forward for big yardage. Rocka Scott, a short, excuse me, number 50, is also in there defensively for Miami at one of the defensive ends as crashing straight up over the middle. Marley, one of the stoppers, along with uh, Ebers, one of the linebackers playing in there. Get everybody getting an opportunity to get some play time today for the Canes as the Owls. Well, they'll have a long trip back to Philadelphia, 1-9, and nine, with their final game against Rutgers coming up next week. Just kind of hoping this thing is over. 9.50 to play. Second down, four yards to go. In motion is Davidson, number 11. 
Palachek giving it again to Mack. Mack trying that little slant over the outside. It's had fairly good success as he gets it out near enough for the first down measurement before Robert Bass can circle him in. Bass from Brooklyn. And Nassau Community College, a fourth-year junior, 6'2", 230. You know, looking at the at the uh, what the Owls are doing here, you say you're down 48 nothing. Why are you running the football? But I think uh, you have to give the head coach a lot of credit. They're still trying to give these kids some confidence. Let them run the football. Let them have some success because you know, they don't want to turn that quarterback loose with everybody blitzing on every down coming after. Well, you saw Bass trying to commit it on a third down try. They had committed and uh, completed only one of ten. And the blitzing defense for Miami got him totally off guard. Mack could not get back to the line of scrimmage before Bass would fake the blitz and then came straight ahead. will knock him down for a yard loss, and it's fourth down and two. Temple appears to be bringing on their punt team, as again, Short was also in there for Miami. All right here you see Bass making the hit in the backfield. <laughs> Some of one of those nine seven dives we just saw. Well do we get another fake punt is the question. Well Hale is the man that uh, did it before. Number 46 watch in that of course is Shea you're looking at there the punter and Jonathan uh, Harris and there is that fake again and Hale for the second time this afternoon will not gain 19 on this one but he gains enough for the first down and Yes, they have used it, and yes, Miami has not adjusted to it that well. Well, Miami did a better job. They were prepared for it, but you know, they just wasn't strong enough to keep control of the line of scrimmage because they only needed a yard for the first down, but they did a good job of not getting hit with the big play. So it's a first and ten once again for the Temple Owls as they've got the ball at the 43-yard line. In their own territory, they have been in Miami territory, I believe, three times this afternoon. Two of them down inside the 20, but fail to come up with any points. So the shutout is still intact. The Kane defense giving up an average of only 12 points per game. Palisac back to throw. Throws complete and knocked out of bounds up to the 45-yard line, a gain of three. The receiver, number 90, Russell Casco. And Casco, as a matter of fact, has a couple of touchdown receptions despite the fact he's caught only nine passes that being number 10 so far before Ebers can running him out of bounds again after about a three three and a half yard game well there's streak some more of those fun fill uh, facts for you the Canes have recorded 11 shutouts at least one time in each of the seasons and they're going for another and the juggler here with 740 to play in the game and leading 48 to nothing Frederick number one in motion for Temple Palisak back to throw again intended for Casco and he cannot come up with it. Well here we see the Owls have went back to their earlier their earlier game plan of trying to isolate the tight end on the linebackers. Now that Miami has taken out those speed linebackers they're trying to isolate Casco on Eburst and uh, take advantage of it but there Eburst came up and made the play shook the ball loose. Checking some of those other people again. Sigler number 34 is still in on the corner along with Chad Wilson at the other corner. They're playing Pearson and Richardson I believe at the deep they do. We've set some of the linebackers for you. Here again is going to be Raphael Mack running with a vengeance into Miami territory as he gets it down to the 48. Marley man it reached around to try to knock the ball away from him. You see the ball on the ground there, and you also see one of the canes. Back, good high step, good runner. And again, Bass was the one that finally made the stop on him at the other end of the run. Good look at Mac, a sophomore tailback, 5'11", 200 pounder. You have to wonder, them going to the, to the three wide receivers, with as many talented tailbacks that they, as they have is uh, kind of strange. That's Especially Robert. when you don't have a quarterback that can get the ball to him. That, by the way, is Robert Bass, number 49, that is down for Miami. Look like he's just got the wind knocked out of him there, according to what they're doing there. And here you see him getting stuck by his own mm. player, uh, C.J. Richardson there. And oh, I think he just uh, got the wind knocked out of him a little bit there. I'll be making a trip to the pizza parlor this afternoon, I don't think. 7.15 as the clock has stopped here in the fourth quarter of this ball game. As you see the clouds hanging over the Orange Bowl, it's been anything but a non-sunny day for 
the Hurricanes and of course Bass getting up slowly. You know before it gets too hectic we would like to certainly thank a lot of folks and of course our producer Tom Hastings who has done yeoman work at all of our Orange Bowl football games for Sunshine. The athletic director Dave Maggard for the University of Miami. Head coach Dennis Erickson and his staff always very very cooperative people and we appreciate it. The associate athletic director for communications Larry Wall. Sports Information Director Linda Benson and her great staff. And I mean, they are super second to none. Our spot of this afternoon has been Marty Saul, who's been with us off and on all year. Statistician Andrew Oskowski, a great job. And a special thank to Tom and Maureen uh, Piero, who have been with us all year long, getting us all kinds of information. And to Tom and Maureen, thank you very much for your yeoman work this year. A pass intended again for Costco, knocked down by Pearson. Almost came up with an intercept, and he had nothing but green grass in his way, but he just couldn't come up with the errant ball. Palasak really got lucky there that he, he was able to throw a high pass that uh, kept Pearson from being able to come down with a touch because Pearson had this interception all the way. He read it perfectly. He breaks on the ball. The difference is it's a high ball, so all he could do is jump up and try and swat it away. So on the fourth down play, the ball goes over to Miami, and we'll see some more new faces coming in for the Canes. And that will include a brand new quarterback, and that is uh, Ryan Collins, I believe. Number eight will step under center for the first time. A man from Pembroke Pines, just a freshman redshirt. And he gives it off to Ferguson, and the freshman connection collaborates for about a six yard gain. Make it five. It'll be second down and five yards to go for Miami as they wind it to 644 to go. Good look at Collins, young man that played at Hylia Lakes High School. So far, he's completed only two of six passes for eight yards, but he does have a touchdown pass so far this year in the early goings. Second down, and indeed, they do need six yards, so a gain of four on the play. Collins has trips to the left side. Gives it off to Marucci. Jason gets it up for another first down into Al territory at the 39-yard line. Stopped by Roman Hale, number 46, who has had himself quite an afternoon defensively along with Scott Dennis. Have not called Dennis's name quite as much as Hale, but Hale certainly has been very active along with Crispina and Angelo. Defensively, they played a lot for Temple today. Well, the Miami guards have done just an excellent job on the linebackers, the inside linebackers for the Owls, keeping them out of the play. And you know, that's one reason that we haven't been, been calling uh, Scott Dennis's number that much today. They're going to give it another try here to Ferguson as he and Marucci are alternating at the running back spot. Again, Collins is getting a little anxious. He wants to try to throw that first pass of the afternoon, but right now the running game is going very well. Hale making the stop for Temple. Well, they're, Miami's doing two things here. They're, they're running the football, working on their running game, but also doing the class thing by not running the score up where they're throwing the football because even though that's Miami's... Uh, type of offense throwing the football two to two to three times out of every four downs people would look at that as trying to run the score up just a shade over 41,000 41,212 in attendance on homecoming today as Marucci going for the first down ducks his head and bows to right at the 30 depends on the spot they had to go just inside the 30 to about the 29 and a half for the first down they bring up third and short and it appears that it does Singleton makes the stop. 48-0 Miami here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Going for their 51st consecutive Orange Bowl victory. And again, 57 is the all-time record by the Alabama Crimson Tide. And the Canes will have to wait at least a year or so to try to accomplish that. And off to Ferguson. Steps over one of his blockers and goes to the 20-yard line. Simonette, number 66, was laying on the field after making his block, and he must have done a good job because the linebacker was not there. There was no one there, and as you see, Daniel Ferguson, he does a great job. He has that knack of being able to cut back against the grain, step over the blocker, and get the first down. Greg Liberty making the stop there for the Temple Owls. Joe Rose has stayed uh, rather dry this afternoon on a day that looked like it could have been a rainy afternoon at the Orange Bowl. But so far, it has stayed away outside of a light sprinkle early this morning. Now, Collins looking at something that is not going right, and a timeout is going to be called. Stopping the clock with 4.01 left to play here in the game, a 48 to nothing score for the Hurricanes again in the lead. 
So as Miami trying to wrap up another home victory and send the homecoming crowd home with a victorious smile on their face, they've done such a good job so far, leading it by a lopsided margin. Again, a crowd of just over 41,000 enjoying the festivities with Miami leading. Let's go quickly to Joe Rose. Thank you, guys. Uh, there are some three to 500 T-shirts down here in the Orange Bowl today, and I don't know if you can get over here, but they all say Toretta for the Heisman. And uh, they're around promoting it today, and we'll just remain to be seen whether they get it, whether uh, he gets it or not. Well, the presidential races are over now. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And this is the most fun-filled one as Gino Toretta and his fellow seniors. Michael Barrow, though, giving holds the U.M. career records for yards passing, total offense, attempts, completions, 46 touchdown passes, too shy of another record there. And the list goes on and on. And he's got two big football games left with Syracuse and San Diego State on the road next week and then on the 28th out at San Diego and next week I can't tell you how big that game's going to be with Syracuse that'll be a good one well I think that's that's the difference in them winning the national championship or having a shot at it uh, if they can win the next two ball games without a doubt Toretta becomes the Heisman Trophy winner uh, because not only is he one of the great football players in the country or the best football player in the country but he has led his team to back to back shots at national championships. You know, when you think about Miami, when they started off and everybody was talking, yes, they went to Iowa, they won there, yes, they came back and beat Florida a and but then they seemed to struggle. The Arizona 8-7 to win. Then people kept saying, is this the number one team? Toretta's offense just looks sluggish. They're not very, uh, the timing is not there. The offensive line is pretty poor. But boy, has this ball club just stayed together, they pulled together, and now they're in a situation to win a back-to-back -back national title. Well, they had to rebuild that offensive line and, and, and develop some confidence there, and they done that now and you can see the big difference and just what they're able to get accomplished week in and week out now well the reserve front line are opening up the line for Marucci Jason getting some yardage before Hale who has gone all the way at inside linebacker for Temple makes the stop here for the Owls and this ball club would like to send them over the half century mark with a touchdown here a 42-yarder by Pruitt opened up the scoring 3-0. Bennett, Donnell Bennett starred to make it 10-0. After a fumble recovery by Armstead, a 37-yard Pruitt field goal made it 13-zip. Toretta hit Tucker for his first touchdown at 20-zip. And then an 89-yard interception before the half by Signal made it 27-0 at halftime. As Ferguson goes running out of bounds, and the only two scores in the third period came with Toretta to Kirkite. Costa then came on to hit Copeland for a 41 to nothing lead, and then finally Ferguson scoring his first career touchdown to make it 48 to nothing for Miami. And that's the way the scoring has gone today here in the Orange Bowl. Third down play, six yards needed for Miami. As again, Ryan Collins is the quarterback, number eight. An offense that has averaged over 419 yards is run by that rather successfully this afternoon. Very successful. They also averaged 28.6 points, and they've got to double that as well. Here is Collins once again handing off to Marucci, and Marucci's knocked out of bounds as a flag goes down. And while all of that was happening, Dennis Erickson has just taken a bath on the sideline as they have dumped the Gatorade on him. And there is a very wet, very cold, but I'm sure very happy Dennis Erickson. But he calls the play, so he's still got to work a little here. Yeah, he's, he, <laughs> he's still got three minutes and ten seconds of work to do. Oh, my. Four Hurricane classes have graduated without losing a home game as we continue with the 51-game winning streak now at the Orange Bowl for Miami. And the hits just keep coming. But did you know it's over 22 million seconds if you strange. can give me the milliseconds, <laughs> no. you've got some. No, 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 no. It's uh, too late in this ball game at 310 left to play in the fourth <laughs> quarter. Dad, it has been a pleasure working with you and Joe Rose. Uh, a great pleasure to work with a sensational football player and doing a great job in the booth. It's been my pleasure to be with you all this year. Well, thank you, Sam. Uh, as you know, this is my first time, and uh, it's been an honor to have someone, a pro like yourself, to teach me. So thank you. Well, we hope the fans have enjoyed our coverage on Sunshine Network of Canes football. And again, Two more games to go towards a national title. Collins throwing that first pass, and wouldn't you know it, somebody's going to come up and drop the football, and uh, that someone that he'd be talking to is, again, Tucker, who had caught his first career touchdown pass, and that one couldn't have been much easier. Well, that, you know, you, you lay out and you make a great catch, a diving catch to, to score the touchdown, and then you're wide open and you drop one. So, you know, that just goes to show you that uh, anything can happen no matter who you are. Sebastian even saying, I could have caught that ball. 
But he may get another chance here as Tucker still in there, number 81. Simonette, by the way, is the center in the reserve here, and he'll be throwing the shotgun for the first time to Collins. I don't believe Collins ran the shotgun any other earlier times that we saw him. This could be an adventure, and now Collins is going to call a timeout. He didn't like what he saw, and he probably did get the ball when he wanted it, too. So the timeout has been called, and Collins will troop to the sideline, and again, Dennis Erickson took a shower a little bit earlier this afternoon as his team in the lead, 48 to nothing, closing moments. Beautiful skyline shot of downtown Miami with 3.03 as we pull back into the Orange Bowl here with the Hurricanes lead it 48 to nothing over the Temple Owls in our Sunshine Network coverage of Hurricane football as Erickson and company have done the number on the Owls and Big East play. Brian Collins, the quarterback, has a fourth down play and 13 yards to go. He is not in the shotgun but under center Simonette. He is back. The draw goes to Marucci and on a fourth down play they will not get it and Temple will take over the football at the 25. By the way, before we get uh, too far removed on the closing moments of this ball game, again, some other assistant coaches. We mentioned the defensive coaches earlier on. Greg Smith, the assistant head coach, offensive line coach, Art Kehoe, assistant offensive line coach, Dave Arnold, tight ends and special teams. Rich Olson, newly added with the wide receivers and quarterbacks, and Alec Wood with the running backs, along with the defensive people we mentioned early on. Dennis Erickson truly has a class group of assistants to work with this number one college football team. Temple will take over. Palachek again is the quarterback for the Owls. 2.55 left to play. He will have a breeze at his back, but a flag is down. I don't think he got it off. Looks like there's a flag down there anyway. Nonetheless, they are calling the timeout to Temple. Well, you know, what's what's difficult, the scoreboard reads that uh, there is, that the Owls have no timeouts left. So this has got to be a penalty because they didn't have an, a timeout. So the Temple Owls are credited with a timeout. Less than three minutes to go. We'll be back in just a moment. The Temple Owls, after being assessed a penalty for taking an additional timeout, trailing 48 to nothing here at the Orange Bowl, and back to throw is going to be Palachek, and it's almost intercepted by the Hurricanes. A diving try deep in the secondary for the Canes and try to come up with it. Number 48, that is going to be Marcus Carey. Boy, well, almost got his hands on it to stick. Yeah, he came close to making an acrobatic catch there with a one-hander and uh, just wasn't able to come down with the football. Another flag is down against Temple with 2.48 and the clock stopped here. I think that's against the Hurricanes roughing the passer. Against, it is. I'm sorry. Palachek, after he let go of the football, he did take a pretty good shot there. So Palachek has had a rough afternoon, as has Mr. Linhart. The two quarterbacks, and again, the Gatorade buckets are still on the move on that hurricane sideline. Now, what do you think? Now, look at Mark Caesar's face. I mean, this is kind of like a, a little bitty kid in a china closet, but he is tougher than nails when he gets out on the field. It's amazing the change of personalities that you see. Speaking of personalities and a stick coming straight ahead to make a good stop for the Hurricanes as they just completely claps it in right up the middle. Number 59 is going to be Hardy. Comes up and make the stop, and here is going to be the attack is on. Oh, my, that's cold. Caesar has scored again, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ed to Brute. The, the Gatorade Brigade. Under 2.20 to play. Temple with a second down and 10 yards to go. And back, Palasak. Pass complete to the near sideline and hustle out of bounds. Number 89, it is Bob Mitchell, a tight end. As he catches the ball, Ebers, the linebacker, number 61, makes the stop. Young man from Palmetto High School. One of the fifth-year seniors getting an opportunity to play in his final home game here at the Orange Bowl. Of the regular campaign, anyway. It all started, you may recall, back after the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew. Camp was moved up to Vero Beach. Went on the road against Iowa, came back home. Help the uh, devastation down in Homestead. It's been quite a year for the Hurricanes, and now they hope to culminate the whole activities as Hardy is going to get some help from his friends in knocking down the Temple running back. And another flag is down as a little pushing and shoving. Extracurricular activity going on. Bethel, by the way, was one of the first to reach the running back, and then Hardy came in for the kill. 
One thing that you made mention of in one of our earlier ball games, and we too have gone over to some of the practice and just watch how tough some of the practices can be. I mean, they really put pressure on each other. The starters are challenging the second, third, and fourth guys to say, hey, if you want my job, come after it, big fella. And that's nice. Well, I think that's what really have brought this here football team to the level that they're at now. Uh, they work harder during the course of the, the week in practice, and, and the game becomes just strictly fun. So a personal foul marched off against the Temple Owls. We'll back it up to a fourth down play, and it'll be, that by the way, came on a dead ball call, so that's the reason the down did count. Jonathan Harris will be standing back at about his own 45 and wait this kick from John Shea. Do we get the fake punt this time? Well, let's see. How many yards does he got to go? He's got to go 24 yards. I don't think so this time, folks. Why not? Why not? Let's try it again. He's had two. Both have been successful. Nope. Well, he even reached for it. Shea gets another one of those short kicks out of there, and it takes a Miami bounce, and it's going to be down to around the 45-yard line. And a man that came over to down at four of the Owls, number 42, Jason Thompson. And it'll be the Hurricanes football after only a 24-yard punt off the toe of John Shea will not help his 32-yard average as the seniors indeed have had themselves quite an afternoon in this ballgame. You saw the very mischievous Mr. Thomas going over and saying, Coach, well, you deserve everything. And, of course, Toretta wrapping up another successful day in his quest of the Heisman. Gino Toretta, many thought, can he live up to the news and all of the things the other quarterbacks had done? The question is being answered by Toretta, yes. As he, in his quest of the second Heisman that has been won here at the university, of course, Vinny Testaverde, the other. And on the other side of the coin, what if, what if we had a little bit more personnel? What if we'd come in here with a little different situation? The Owls will just have to take that back home with them to Philadelphia and try for another year. Well, they, they've got a lot of rebuilding to do, and you know, they've got a, a, a junior and senior ball club themselves where you know, they're just trying to, to, to walk out of here today with, to, to gain some experience with the young guys because they've got a lot of y good young players, but you know, you've got to get used to winning. When you go one and nine, it's kind of tough to, to build that winning attitude. Marucci gets the handoff from Collins and up for the first down to the 29. They'll stop the clock momentarily to reset the change. It is stopped at 22, and the Canes probably will not get another playoff because the, the clock will be whirled into motion once the chains are set. And this ball game will be in the record books. And Jerry Byrne, they have indeed coached his last game for the Temple Owls against the Miami Hurricanes as the storm clouds are gathering. And the clock is winding down, and you'll hear this crowd enjoying the final moments of the 51st consecutive victory for Dennis Erickson's Miami Hurricanes. Of course, he's had some predecessors along the way have helped build the strain, but he adds to it with a convincing 48 to nothing win over the Temple Owls here this afternoon at the Orange Bowl. More importantly, they also add to their winning streak, which is now mushroomed to 27 straight games in the showdown with Syracuse comes up next week again at the Carrier Dome and a final game at San Diego State on the 28th. But there's smiles and happiness all around with another big victory and a shutout at the Orange Bowl over Temple.